Um, when we broadcast this, is it going to be broadcast on PMTV or is it going to be on Viva TV? What do you think, PFT? I think, well, you might you might be the one that's the star of it, so it might be we would rename it Diva TV for you. Ha <laughs> ha! You walked into that. On today's part of my take, an extra long Wednesday episode, sending you into Thanksgiving. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to talk Monday Night Football. We're going to talk Thanksgiving games. We're all going to give a pick. We all have to have at least one pick for the Thanksgiving and Black Friday games. So we're going to do three picks this week. Let's do four. Let's do three. Let's do three. three nice try, good. Hank. Uh, we are going to talk to our good friend, crazy uncle, Mike Florio. Weird. And we're going to do guys on Thanksgiving. And after Florio, you can stop if you have to work on Friday. We'll do the Sunday preview uh, for all of week 12. So big show, extra long show for the people. And it's all brought to you by our friends at Game Time. You shouldn't have to worry when you're buying tickets to your next big event. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. I've done it all in the last couple months when it comes to Game Time. Uh, over the summer, I was going to Cubs games. Uh, I was I went to Nate Bargatze at the Chicago Theater Comedy. I went and saw Wisconsin play Ohio State football. It has it all. Game time has it all. Last minute tickets, flash deals, zone deals. Easy to find and buy tickets for every kind of event in your area. Game time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. See the view from your seat before you buy, so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. All in prices show your total up front, so you know you're getting a great deal without hidden fees. Buy tickets in seconds with two taps. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app. Create an account. Use code PMT for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account. Redeem code PMT for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Game Time is the exclusive ticketing partner of Barstool Sports. We love Game Time. They'll always get you in the best seats, and they'll take care of you. If something changes. So go check out Game Time right now. Use code PMT for $20 off your first purchase. Okay, let's go. Welcome to Part of My Take. Today is Wednesday, November 22nd, and the Philadelphia Eagles have the best record in the NFL, PFT. Congratulations to the Eagles for getting the one seed. I don't see them losing. The Max, congratulations. Eagles, Super Bowl champions. They didn't get the one seed. Oh, I thought they did. I watched your video, and I thought they did. Son, we're the fucking best. I love every single one of you that's out of this team. You guys all suck. The Eagles are the best. We go into Arrowhead and we dominate this football game. Not really, but at the end we made plays when we needed to make plays. That's what I'm talking about. I love this team. Oh, I love this team. Give me the rest of this schedule. I don't give a fuck. We're going to beat them all. Sorry. You guys don't like passion anymore. It's fine. <laughs> we love passion. So, Monday Night Football was great. Uh, it delivered. We wanted a very good game. We got a very, maybe not the best played game. But we got the, a very dramatic game. It was a close game. It was an interesting game. I don't want to downplay what the Eagles did because going into that environment, that's tough to win in. Credit to the Eagles. That's a sign of a good team for being able to come out of that game with a win. Like, really well-coached team, great players. I'm not going to say anything bad about the Eagles. They deserve to win. But it's very concerning to me that the Chiefs can't score a single point in the second half of their last three games. Chiefs? Very so, concerning. Chiefs, yeah, three games in a row. No points in the second half. So let's talk about the Eagles real quick because they did win. That's and then, fine. And then we'll get to the, the Chiefs. The Eagles, so they got – if you watch that game, the Chiefs look like they were the better team while watching it. But the Eagles get a ton of credit because the Eagles are a team that knows how to stick in games and knows how to make the big play when the moment arrives. Yeah, like That is to me what the Eagles are is that you get credit – for that Jalen Hurts, Devontae Smith throw, being able to figure out the second half, your defensive adjustments to keep the Chiefs out of the end zone, like, you know, f punching the ball out of Kelsey's hand in the red zone. Like, the Eagles are a team that is not just good, 
but they also have that ability to big big moments they deliver. And so they do get a ton of credit from me for winning in a very tough environment in Arrowhead in a game that it looked like they were not the better team while watching the game. Again, they, they might be the better team, you know, come January. But if you watch that game, the Eagles, or at least in the first half especially, the Chiefs were able to move the ball, whereas the Eagles were getting sacked every single play. Yeah, so it's crazy because if you watch the Super Bowl, you think, fuck, the Eagles are really good. I can't believe they lost that game. They played such a good game. If you watch this game, you're like, it was kind of ugly. Eagles gritted it out, stayed in there, didn't make too many mistakes. They made a big play when they had to. I think Jalen Hurts had like 105 yards passing before that bomb to Devontae Smith at the end of the game. Um, but you look at the other side of the ball, the Eagles' defensive line played really well last yeah. night. Yeah. Really well. And that's the difference. That's why they didn't win the Super Bowl. The second half they showed up. was because they couldn't get to Patrick Mahomes, and they got to Pat Patrick Mahomes a lot. Uh, I do like Nick Sirianni, though. Nick Sirianni is kind of like a defensive back who will celebrate incompletions when it's like a yes. drop pass or a massive overthrow. Sirianni was the first guy being like, no, incomplete when Michael Hard or no, uh, MVS. Uh, yes. Marcus uh, Valdez Scantling dropped that bomb at the very end of the game, which he should have caught. Packers fans are like, told you. Yep, that we've seen that play before. Uh, if you can touch it, you can catch it, right, Hank? Facts. Facts. So that's oh. what, Jalen Carter actually should have had an interception on that spike. By Patrick Mahomes. Oh, that was the best. He touched it. That was the best. Yeah. Uh, Max, so while we're talking about the Eagles, tell us your thoughts on the game real quick. Um, do you, like, is it okay to say that the Chiefs maybe were, the, like, they they look like the better team, but it doesn't matter because the Eagles make the big plays? For the for the majority of the game, yes. At the end of the game, no. Right. The when e big plays have to happen, yes. the Eagles step up. Not to mention, everyone keeps saying that, that MVS drop lost the game. If he catches that ball, Eagles have a minute 50 and three, time, and three timeouts to just get a field goal. So that's one thing that is really bothering me that everyone's like, if MVS catches that ball, it's game well, over. Well, there were other it drops, It wasn't game too. over. There were other drops. I know, but like, sometimes you got to make plays. Yeah. He made a play, they didn't. Correct. Here, here's for the Chiefs. So the Chiefs wide receivers are a problem. Like, it's clear that it's a problem. And it's also, I know that people are going to play the revisionist history and be like, how do you not keep Tyreek Hill? I do think in terms of the Chiefs were not thinking about, one, they won a Super Bowl without Tyreek Hill. That happened. So you, you that, that flag flies forever. They won the Super Bowl. That's everyone's goal. They won the Super Bowl without Tyreek Hill. I also think the Chiefs made a calculated move to essentially say, we know that with Patrick Mahomes, he's going to be the franchise quarterback for 15, maybe 20 years. We have to evolve and stay ahead of this, like trading Tyreek Hill for a bunch of draft picks, making the, the Chiefs have their best defense for Patrick Mahomes. Like, their defense is very, very good. And we have to evolve into a team that can get a little younger on the wide receiver, try to find that next guy, because we know that Patrick Mahomes will be here, and you have to keep, like, constantly almost rebuilding on the fly. Otherwise, you're going to fall behind. So I have no problem with, like, people are complaining that they got rid of Tyreek Hill. Well, yeah, I think that was a smart move for the next – Five, ten years instead of right now, which again, right now they won the Super Bowl last year. It would be awesome if they had Tyreek Hill. I think Andy Reid would tell you that, yeah, we could use Tyreek Hill on this team. That's not like a question, but when you factor in the contract and everything that goes along with it, yeah, you can't, you have to make decisions about who you pay. And they're like, well, this guy is going to be, you know, a massive, massive price tag. We have to figure out a way to win without him. And you're right, they did. They won without him. So they were right about that. Right. Um, it, I don't know if it's like, alternating nights of which Chiefs receiver can't catch a ball or if they just all can't catch. But it seems like every Chiefs loss, it's because one guy, and it's a different guy every time, yeah. can't hang on to a football. They, they lead the league, I think, in drop passes. and what well, By I, far. Yeah, by far. What I don't – there also was a very funny clip. Uh, Patrick Mahomes threw his towel or something to a fan after yeah. the game, and the fan dropped it. Yeah. Like, perfect. Perfect ending. Um, the one thing that happens with the Chiefs – that I don't that I, I want to push back on is it does feel like when the Chiefs lose a game, we don't give credit to the other team and we're like, oh well, they drop passes and the Chiefs like the the, the Chiefs are are fine, which I do think they're fine long term. Uh, but I think this game, as much as the drop passes hurt them, it comes down to knowing that their offense is not as explosive as it has been in the past. You need two guys to basically be a plus or a in a game, and that's Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey. And what happened? Patrick Mahomes throws a really bad interception in the red zone. Travis Kelsey fumbles in the red zone. Those are the two plays that changed that game 
that the Chiefs, like they don't have the margin for error for those for both of their best players to make mistakes like that in the red zone. If either if one of them doesn't make that mistake, the Chiefs probably win the game. Yeah. That's really what it comes down to is like you need Patrick Holmes not to throw interceptions in the red zone. You need Travis Kelsey to hold on the football man in the red zone. Travis Kelsey also looks a little bit slow out there. I don't know if he's hurt. There's a chance he might be injured. I know he just snuck away to Argentina for a week. So people are going to talk about that. That's just it's that's the way the game is played. When uh, when Tony Romo, remember he went to Cabo the, uh, before it was the bye week that they had in the playoffs, right? And yeah. Then he came back. Like that's just it's something that we're going to talk about. I don't know if like the travel had anything to do with it. All that all that red meat he was probably eating down there. Yeah. The the other one I always point to is when Brandon Marshall uh, started doing inside the NFL midweek when he was on the Bears, and it yeah. was like, oh, this is cool. He's you know thinking about his next career, and then the Bears started losing. It's like, what the fuck, dude? Why are you traveling? I did notice he had a couple drops. He fumbled. Fingers might be tired. Mm. I don't know what that's all about. Mm. Just something to keep an eye on. Where are those fingers been? Uh, Taylor Swift was not there. Uh, she was playing a concert last night, which was touching. I don't know if you saw that. It gave me all the feels. Mm -hmm. Every feel, I had it. Um, but then Swift on the on the Eagles had a great game. I'm so, Listen, I as a rival, I root for a rival team, but even I can see, like, Swift, it's fun to watch him run the ball. Yeah. And I don't know how the Eagles keep finding all these impact players that they can get in. And it's like, oh, shit, we paid what, like, I don't know. What was it? What was the price tag on Swift, Max? Uh, third, I think. Yeah, I mean, yeah. they're well coached. And, he, and he's awesome. And yeah. he's really good. And every time he gets the ball, it's like, oh, shit, they have this guy, too, in addition to everything else. And the Chiefs could not stop the tush push at all. They got, I think, I think that the Eagles averaged like two, two and a half yards last night on each tush push. It was unstoppable. Yeah. And it's, listen, both those teams, I would not be shocked if they're in the Super Bowl. I think the Chiefs. That the the burying the Chiefs after a loss is we've we've done this before. It's kind of like when when Tom Brady and the Patriots would have a loss and everyone would be like they stink now. It's like I I think in late January they'll still be in the picture. But the Ravens are now the one seed if the if the season ended today. So that is an interesting thing because Patrick Mahomes never won a road game in the playoffs. I don't think he's ever played a road game on. In but the it's, playoffs, easy, it's easier to say he never won a road game in the playoffs. Yeah, he has he has not. Played a road but he's also never yeah but i'm yeah, saying like yeah. that's a concern to me too. yeah has he is he really that good we he's don't never know. won a road game he's been protected by the home field he has never played a road game that is a fact um but yeah it's it's interesting that i don't know I, the, both those teams are really good i well, would love I, to watch them play a million times i am actually fun i am actually concerned about the chiefs i'm uh, like if you can't score a touchdown or any points in the second half of three straight games that's a problem I, i'm concerned about the chiefs and the fact that their receivers have not made the progress that you thought they would make especially coming off a of bye week you thought like this would be the Chiefs best effort in terms of you know offense and they look a lot better um but again I'm just never going to write off Patrick Mahomes because he'll be there and their defense is nasty like they were all over Jalen Hurts in the first half that was the there the, Chris Jones is absolutely he had I think he had a back-to-back -back sacks on one drive yeah it was, it was pretty impressive like he's a game wrecker so are there any wide receivers out there that don't have jobs that they could pick up. I just like speculating about that sort Terrell of thing. Terrell Owens. Terrell T.O., bury the hatch with Andy Reid. Yeah. Come on home. Get him in there. Antonio, Antonio Brown. Antonio Brown. Yeah. Larry Love Fitzgerald, not retired. Larry Fitzgerald, not retired. Yeah. yeah. Antonio Brown and, and Jackson Mahomes hitting the town together. Yeah. That'd be something. Justin Watson also might want to think about changing his number. Yep. 84 is a tight end number. It is. But as a guy that roots for a team that has exclusively like single digit and teen number receivers, I like to see I like to see a solid eighty one out there. I like yeah. to see an eighty two. Yeah, we can say Hank. I think eighty four can be a wide receiver number. I don't know. Every time I see him, I'm like, is that a tight end? Oh no, that's well. There's a, a pretty receiver. good receiver that wore number eighty four, right? Yeah, but maybe it's because he's a white eighty four. Yeah, that's probably it. Yeah, that's yep. probably it. That's probably and he's a little bit taller. Well, if it's a yeah a white guy wearing eighty four over six feet tall, that's tight that's tight end. That's yeah. tight end. That's how our brains work. Yep. Uh, Max, last thing, and I told you this this morning. Um, and this is just, you know, I want to have a real talk with the AWLs for a second. Uh, obviously, last year I was rooting for the Eagles. Last night, PFT and I took the Chiefs. Uh, watching Max's video after, uh, I love Max. Max does an incredible job. I just want to say for the Max haters, I, I see what you're talking about. I see what you're talking about. When I saw that video, I was like, I fucking hate this guy. For a moment. For a moment. 
Listen, I am not looking to make friends with the teams that I go against. <laughs> yeah, that 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 has never been my mo. You're either gonna you're gonna love me or you're gonna hate me when you go into battle with me. But it was funny just seeing it through a different like lens, <laughs> and I was like. Oh yeah, this guy fucking sucks. And I, I snapped out of it. I was like, I fucking love Mac. Both the videos were very funny. I like this one right here. <laughs> Where's all the frog colors now? What about the tweet on Travis Kelsey? Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's talk was, about that. I wanted you mean to mean Max's Pornhub search. I, yeah. I wanted to tweeted. I wanted to bring that up. Sure. Um, Philly Mays tweeted this out last night, 9:40 p.m. This was when Travis Kelsey fumbled the ball right in the red zone. Yeah, Travis little Kelsey, boy. little boy. Little boy ass play. What do you mean by little boy ass play? Because we we texted you about that with Max, and then your reply was, I stand by what I said. You stand by little boy ass play. I don't stand by little boy ass play. I stand bo by little boy ass play. Yeah. Little little, little boy, boy ass, ass play. play. You wanna, no. you're, you're looking for little like, boy ass play? Like that was you're a looking bit, for Travis like, Kelsey with a little boy or yeah. ass little play. boy ass, little boy no, no, ass no. play. Like, what co what like college was, did you go to again, Max? Uh, Villanova V's up. No, uh, yeah. what, 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 what college do you root, root for, for? Sorry, in football, uh, Villanova is going to be in the FCS. Oh, okay. Uh, what about playoffs. James Franklin? How many Franklin. little boy asses have you looked up? Zero. Um, it's, it's like a bitch. You know, like a bitch ass play. Like it's little boy ass play. Little boy ass play. Yeah. No, have you, you guys? You guys? You guys are doing the wrong cadence. You did it. No. No. That was how it was written. Little boy ass play. No. It was All little, caps. That was, yeah. that was a little boy ass play. Have Anyone you got heard? a little boy ass play they want to pass no. around to Max? No, that was a little boy ass play. Have you heard from the FBI? <laughs> no, but I, you also the ra that was the biggest ratio in the history of Twitter. <laughs> I did ratio you really hard last, but I saw it. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, I honestly, I honestly could not believe that you did that, Max. You, but they're gonna steal our computers. But that was a little boy ass play by Travis. Stop Kelsey. saying that. Little boy ass play. Little little boy ass play. No, you guys are doing the pause, which is making it different. It, you said you, you wanted little boy ass play. No. There's no little punctuation. Little boy ass play. Little yeah. boy I, ass play. We don't do punctuation. We don't do punctuation. No, you did. Yeah, another way you, another way you wrote it was you wanted ass play from little boys. No, it was a little boy ass play. Like he, like that Travis Kelsey, little boy. Yeah, he was talk, calling Kelsey a little boy you, and just saying the play was ass, which oh, means that, it was bad. That, That's what he was intending, yeah. but... It did not come across yeah, that little way. little boy ass. Because you yeah. did use punctuation. You said Travis Kelsey, little boy, period. And then little boy ass play. Yeah, little that's boy. where I was like, it, no. I felt, it felt like a search. Yeah. Yeah. Did you yeah. make Google that? No, I just wanted to, I, Travis Kelsey, little boy. Like when the guy and that the, played Hank was, on Breaking Bad just was a little boy tweeted ass out play. sex gifts yeah. by mistake. That's little an awesome one. Play. Okay. Yeah. Well, so overall, Max, you you got to feel good. You still have the gauntlet coming up, like the. But we're ha but we're in the middle of it. Yeah, I know. Yeah, no, I'm saying like the, you're in the middle of it. You you have the rest of the gauntlet coming up. You have Bills, 49ers, Cowboys, Seahawks, which is going to be tough. Yeah, but like, we're two and zero. Yeah. What in, would you What would you want your uh, your your gauntlet record to be in the next four? Four. Four and zero. Four and zero. Would you be happy with three every and game one? must win? What'd you say? Would you be happy with three and one? Every game is must win. Would you be happy with two and two if the two were the Niners and the Cowboys? If I could give you that right now, every guaranteed. Game, I'm, 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 you, I'm not falling into this trap. Every game is must win. Okay, but so you wouldn't be happy with two and two. Every game is must win. Okay, so if you lose a single game, then season season's over. over. <laughs> See, this is what I. This was always my argument. But you're you're not allowed to flip this on me. Oh, well, we just I'm did. just asking questions. Yeah, we just did. This is what we do as a podcast. Yeah. One seed. Okay. Little That's boy all. Little boy play. ass play. You don't want to see the commanders in the playoffs, Max. He just wants commanders are cooked. <laughs> he just wants a little boy with some ass play. No, it was little boy <laughs> ass play. Were you saying that, that Taylor Swift has a, a little boy ass? Oh. That's I, I think that's what it was. No. I'm the only Swifty on this show. That's true because you're in the I'm doghouse, not in the doghouse. I am a Swifty Jake also too. In the doghouse. <laughs> I, I love Taylor Swift. Nah. -uh. Yes. Yes. Huh. Nah. -uh. Yeah. Huh. Nah. -uh. Do so. My son the other day asked to put on Taylor Swift in the car. I almost drove into a median. <laughs> um. It's okay. Good, it's good music. It I'll is say good this music. About Taylor Swift. It is good music. It's it's perfect autumn music. Yeah. It's like the soundtrack to fall. That and Lumineers. It's Lumineer season. Okay. Let's get to our Thanksgiving uh, preview, and we'll include the Black Friday game. So what we're going to do is we're going to do every single game, and then uh, after each game, Hank has questions from the readers about uh, Thanksgiving. So readers. Listeners, sorry, ex ex excuse me, from the AWLs about Thanksgiving. So it's going to be a blend, 
and then we will tell you when you can stop uh, later on in the show if you have to work on Friday, which you should quit your job if you have to work. We should also say that it's Tuesday morning when we're recording. Yes. So things are liable to change. We're probably going to get some things wrong. It's no different from any other show, but it is Tuesday morning. Yeah, and we'll talk a little college football. I'll, 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 I'll use my hot seat cool throne with some college football questions. Okay. Uh, so it is the Thanksgiving preview here is brought to you by our friends at Chevy. There's a new family with unstoppable grit, and they're the official partners of the Pardon My Take family, and that is the Chevy Silverado ZR2 family. The first ever Silverado heavy-duty ZR2 joins the franchise to make Chevy ZR2 the only truck brand with a full lineup of trucks ready for wherever your off-road adventures take you with exclusive Multimatic DSSV dampers, rugged mud terrain tires, and up to 14 available camera views. The Chevy Silverado ZR2 and Silverado HD ZR2, a family with commanding and unstoppable grit. Head to Chevy.com, check out the Chevy Silverado and the family of Chevy ZR2s. The official trucks a part of my take. We are a Chevy podcast. If you are thinking about becoming a truck person, Chevy is the truck for you. So go right now. Head to Chevy.com. Check out Chevy Silverado, the family of Chevy ZR2s. The official trucks a part of my take. Okay, Thanksgiving preview with some listener questions about Thanksgiving. Uh, we will start. We have the first game, the Lions, Packers at Lions. The Lions... This has to be, I think, the most exciting Lions Thanksgiving game in probably since Barry Sanders. Yeah, yeah, th- probably since 1991. It's, it's. I'm very excited to watch this game. The Lions have always traditionally been the Thanksgiving game where you're like, okay, let's let's hope it doesn't go too bad for the Lions, and we get the you know shot of a Lions fan in a pilgrim hat sleeping in the second half. It's going to kind of throw off everybody's schedule, too, because you're used to watching the Lions game and uh, having no expectations for the Lions. Yeah. They're not really in playoff contention or anything like that, so you can you can do your meal prep, you can work on the turkey, and have the Lions game on in the background. I'm going to need to watch this Lions game intently. Yes. And so I guess we're not eating Thanksgiving in my house till probably like 6 p.m. because of that. You got to, yeah, you got to watch the whole game. Got to watch everything. And if you're a Lions fan, this is, this is a great weekend for you. Yeah. Because you get... You get to get day drunk and excited on Thursday for Thanksgiving as opposed to like day drunk and depressed for the Lions game. Then you have Friday as a hangover day, sober up a little bit, rest. Saturday, Michigan, Ohio State, get drunk and excited again. Yep. And then Sunday, full day off, sober up, rest, deal with a hangover. Yeah, watch, watch football stress-free. It's a perfect weekend. Yeah, it is. Yeah, Detroit has finally found the perfect, perfect weekend. So, as for this game, uh, I initially was like, ooh, I kind of like the Packers. And then I remembered uh, watching that entire Packers Chargers game that the Chargers could have and maybe should have won that game going away, except of the Chargers. Mm-hmm. And it made me realize yeah, the Lions, especially how bad their offense looked for three quarters against the Bears, I don't think the Lions' offense will look ba- that bad two games in a row. I think this might be a whomping by you the think, Lions. You think it's a whomping? I, I what qualifies as a whomping? What do we what do we determine on that? One? I think it's like seventeen plus in the NFL. That's a whomping. Yeah, seventeen, maybe even fourteen plus. They're on whomp alert. If it's fourteen plus for you know early enough in the game, that could be a whomping. I, I, I think the Lions are that much better than the Packers. I think the Packers are still like coming along with their team, young guys on offense. Aaron Jones now out, and the biggest mismatch in this game is the Packers run defense is bad and Dan Campbell might just be like you know what I'm going to do for Thanksgiving I'm going to shove the ball down the Packers throat I would love that do turkeys have kneecaps that's my big question I say no non-Thanksgiving they're dead yeah that's true yeah but they still might have kneecaps I would like to see Dan Campbell eat a turkey kneecap after the game Uh, the Green Bay Packers are low-key not that great on Thanksgiving. They're 14, 20, and 2 all time, which doesn't really mean that much because I think the last time they played was 2014. Yeah, the 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 Bears beat them on Brett Favre night. Is that real? It was a it was a Thursday night of Thanksgiving. Yes, almost positive. So Jay Cutler might not even played in that game. When you look at these historic records, it's just it's just fun to say because it doesn't it doesn't really make that much of a difference, but. It was always in the back of my head, like for some reason I thought that the the Packers always beat the Lions on Thanksgiving. Like yeah. I remembered seeing it more than it's actually happened. Uh, I do like the Lions a lot in this game too. I think I think the Lions are ready to roll. They won a game that they should have lost last week. They've got confidence going into this one. Um, and, uh, and also they have a lot to play for right now because the Eagles are going through that gauntlet right now. And the Lions, if the Eagles had lost last night, the Lions win. 
The Lions would they would they be the one seed or would they be no the Eagles have the tiebreaker? I think the Eagles would have the tiebreaker, but they're close. They're, they are. The Lions have a, a very realistic shot given their schedule and the Eagles' schedule and, to end up as the one seed. And the Lions are obviously playing to you know the the, the Vikings' resurgence made the NFC North. It's you know the Vikings lost, so the Lions now are up three games on them. But there was a moment where it was like, ooh, this is getting a little nervous. They do. They got they got to keep winning to to make sure the Vikings don't get any like Dobbs effect where yeah. you're you're looking at week 17 18 and you're like wait is the NFC North up for grabs? What's the verdict on the Lions getting the home the the number 1 seed in the playoff getting a bye because I think we've said and a lot of people around Detroit have said success this year for the Lions is winning a playoff game. That counts as a win. Does that count as a win? Yes. We need to establish bye that counts because as a win. if they get the bye then they play a much more difficult opponent in the second round of the playoffs if they happen to lose that at home. We're still counting the bye as a playoff win. Yes. Okay. All right. Good. We're all on the same page. Yes. So maybe the Lions should try to get the two seed so that they can get a, they can a get a home true play. a true win. That would be awesome. And they would get two home playoff games. We can definitely if they won. We can definitely spin it into that. They actually rather have the two seed. Yeah. Uh, okay. Let's do a Thanksgiving question, guys. On Thanksgiving, by the way, Jack Harlow is the halftime uh, show for this game. Love that. We have Jack Harlow. We have Dolly Parton in the Commanders Cowboys. That's going to be awesome. She's still got it. She's awesome. She's still got it. Dolly Parton I, might You don't be, even have to say would. No, uh, it's implied. Right. Dolly Parton might be... She She should be queen. If we had a queen in the United States, I nominate Dolly Parton. I would too. I also uh, have a nerd nugget. Or, or, or maybe Rihanna. She's slay queen. She is slay queen. <laughs> Dolly's just slay queen queen. Uh, nerd nugget. Sorry, Jake. It's okay. Got some help from the AWLs with this week. Shout out J.R. Howell on this one. The Lions and Packers share one of the league's streakiest series. One team has swept the other in six of the last seven years. Oh. Week four, Lions 34, Packers 20. Yeah, and they, 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 they beat up on them. Remember, that was Jared through an interception like on the first play of the game, too. And you're like, uh-oh, the Lions yeah. might, that might be struggling. Um, last year was so awesome, that last play. That last week of the year, yeah, where they, I'm counting that also as a playoff, line, playoff. Win. Yep. Uh, by the way, so so Dolly Parton, Commanders, Cowboys, 49ers, Seahawks. Who do you think is being the halftime performer? Macklemore, Kid Rock, Steve Aoki. Oh, yeah. Okay. Maybe he throws a cake in someone's face. I think that's something Ooh. he does. Did he fall down the stairs at the Met Gala? Yes, he did. That was embarrassing. Yeah. But well, Jason Derulo took all the headlines because he fell first. Mm -hmm. Hank, guys on Thanksgiving. Hey, Lottery Ball Geniuses, Big Cat and Hank. Thank you. And also the Idiot Losers. I'm wondering what you guys think about turkey. I think it's not even in the top five of other dishes at the table. My family disagrees. Thoughts? I love turkey. I love turkey. I, I love eating it twice a year. I eat it every year on Thanksgiving and Christmas. Um, it's one of my favorite meals. I deep fry it, though. I don't like, like, if you bake a turkey, the, the breast especially gets mm -hmm. really dry. Mm -hmm. Not that great. If you deep fry a turkey and do it right, it is outstanding. It's one of my favorite things ever. I think there has been a pushback on turkey recently. People doing steak for Thanksgiving. People doing like prime rib for Thanksgiving. I would say I love steak more than turkey, obviously. That's a no-brainer. But turkey on Thanksgiving is what you do. You it's have to keep doing it. If you start doing steak on Thanksgiving... It now diminishes steak. Like steak, there's nothing better than a great steak dinner, going out for a nice steak dinner at a steakhouse. Keep turkey in Thanksgiving. Let's not try to reinvent the wheel. That's when you eat turkey. There's no other time, really, to eat turkey. Eat. Let's eat turkey. Yep. We I, eat steak all year. Listen, I, I love turkey. It's the ritual of spending all day preparing it, cooking it, and then carving it. I love carving it, too. Like, you don't get that with steak at all. It's about family, togetherness. You get to drink beers while you're cooking the turkey. Yep. It's incredible. I, I love Thanksgiving. It's my favorite holiday in the world. Everyone here, dark meat over white meat? Yes. Yes. No. What? It has so much more flavor. You know I what? remember the moment when I was like 12 years old. I was like, what is this? Yeah, thighs. You can eat the, you can eat the kind of slimy, gross part. It's so much better. The thighs, the oyster at the bottom of it, that's the best part. I don't think you've ever had dark meat. I like white meat better, too. Hank, you're not a combo guy? You ever, had, you ever like tried dark some dark meat? meat? I just like the white Sounds meat like you don't like dark meat. No, I just prefer white meat. I don't okay. think that you've had dark meat. I've had dark meat. No, white I don't meat, think you have. White meat's better with a bite. Like you, If you get like the bite of the mashed potatoes and the stuffing mm -hmm. with the white meat, like mm -hmm. it combos better. Like The dark yeah. meat is it's actually the texture. Better than the combo. The texture. <laughs> you need to have... Here's, here's my thing with the white meat. If you're eating the breast, it has to have some skin on it. 
mm-hmm. at the very least. I can't. I don't like doing just like a big forkful of pure breast meat. But yeah, you have it like with a bite with something else. Yeah, but dark meat, you don't need that. Have you guys heard of this one? Have you have you heard this one? Um, <clears throat> leftovers are actually the best part about Thanksgiving. Oh, the left the sandwich the following year. Ever, everyone always thinks that they're like uh, discovering this new thing called leftovers. I, it's really just like yeah, I'm fat. I eat all day. By the time we get to halftime of the night game, I'm ready to eat again. I want to I want to stand out on a soapbox and and pound my chest for stuffing. Oh, stuffing it's the is best. Ama- we should eat stuffing way more frequently than we do. It's the best. It, the problem with stuffing, I think, is the name. You can't eat stuffing and not be like, I'm a fat fuck. We call it a dressing <laughs> growing up. Right. If you're you, from the South, you call it dressing. You, stuffing is the, the fat fuck. It's essentially being like, oh, what am I going to have for dinner? Donuts? You, you just know going into it, it's called stuffing. Yeah. So, But yeah, I agree. Stuffing, I do cranberry sauce on everything. I do gravy on everything. It's the best. Uh, should we talk about the intro to that call, referring to Hank and Big Cat as being lottery ball geniuses? Because there's been a discussion about that for the last 24 hours. Do yeah, I'd assume we that? were going to talk about it at the end of the show okay. when we do the lottery balls. Okay. I could do it now. We can wait. That's, yeah. That's what we call a tease in the biz. That's a little, nice little tease. All right, next game, Cowboys Commanders. <laughs> Cowboys are going to fucking kill the Commanders. Yeah, do it. Kill me now. Kill me now, Dallas. Like, just put me out of my misery. Take Ron out. I'm, I'm almost... It's sad to say this. Like once the game starts, I will obviously be rooting for the Commanders to win. Uh, but now that I have, I've got pre nut clarity right now because it's a Tuesday and the game's not for another two days. It would be great if we got our ass kicked and then Ron and Jack Del Rio both got fired. That's yeah. that's what I would like to see because it's it's been depressing watching this team. Again, we lost to the Giants. Credit to the Giants. The Giants are not a very good team, but they're way better than we are, and so that should tell you exactly where you stand right now. So I'm hoping right now in this moment that we get our ass kicked by Mike McCarthy, probably going to smash a turkey like it's a watermelon with a sledgehammer before the game, and they blow us out. Josh Harris fires Ron and Jack Del Rio, and then we get to see BNB for the rest of the season. That's and, what I'm hoping for. And so Sam Howell's better. So the, the Cowboys have killed the really bad teams. Yep. They killed the Jets. They killed the, the Patriots. They killed the Giants twice. They killed the Panthers. Sam Howell's better than all those quarterbacks that I just of, of the teams I just listed. The one thing that is in common though with those teams is bad offensive line. Yeah. So I think that's the common denominator here that Sam Howell is going to struggle with is the Cowboys eat against bad offensive lines, and I I feel like this is also the Cowboys on Thanksgiving if they got your number and really the Cowboys in general at home. I think they've won twelve in a row at home. It does feel like they kind of play old school BCS football where they're like, we're going to run up the score and get some style points. Yeah. Yeah. Like Jerry I, wants to, Jerry might be like bonuses for everyone for, for every point over 10 that we win. It makes him look good. Right. In front of a national audience. Jerry wants us win big time. So I'm, yeah. If I, were, if I were to bet on this, I would probably bet on the Cowboys. I don't, I'm, I'm not delusional you can't, enough to yeah. think that, that the commanders have a fighting chance. I guess everyone has a fighting chance in the NFL, but I, I don't see them winning this game. Yeah. All right, Hank. Question or sorry, Nerd Nugget. Micah Parsons is the first player in Cowboys franchise history with 10 sacks in each of his first 3 seasons. He's also the first player since 2007, Sean Merriman, to have 10 plus sacks in each of his first 3 seasons. You know what Micah Parsons needs? And Max, maybe I'm missing this, but does he have like a signature celebration that he does? Mm. Press the button, Max, to talk. That was memes. Um, I don't know, Micah Parsons. Yeah, does it? Does he have a, a celebration? That was question. Yep. Does he have know. a dance that he does? I don't. Not that I know of. I would like to see Micah Parsons do like his own signature thing mm-hmm. to celebrate. I think that would go a long way towards people recognizing how good he is. Because Sean Merriman had the lights out, which was iconic. Yeah, you're right. We need it. We need. We need that. You're right. You're absolutely right. Question. Hey boys, this this one might be fake. Uh oh. My girlfriend wants me to come to her house for Thanksgiving. We're going strong, dating three years, may propose soon. Only issue is that I kind of had a Max situation with her brother and woke up one night in his bed. Oh. Everyone was fucked up and Did I didn't. Kiss him on the cheek? I didn't oh. want the brother to think I was banging his sister, so I slept in his bed. At least that's what I think I did when I was drunk. I woke up in the middle of the night to the brother touching my lower back and butt. Oh, softly, but it was weird with his hand. Uh, you got to. Yeah, you got to be out. I moved to my girlfriend's bed. I haven't seen him since that day two weeks ago. 
and he's bringing his new boyfriend of one week to their Thanksgiving because oh. the boyfriend is Canadian and doesn't do Thanksgiving. Oh. How do I get out of this? Do I tell my girlfriend? Did I get molested by my girlfriend's brother? Love you guys. Thanks for being a great pod. You're kind of sending mixed signals here. Yep. I think it's You're on talking this about guy. provocation. I'm saying he he slept in the guy's bed. I would if I were that guy, I'd be flattered. Yeah, I I actually think now that we have the wrinkle that it's uh, the boyfriend is gay, I think that's totally fine now. Yeah, like you you slept in his bed. Like it it would be it would be weirder if that was how he came out of the closet, being like I accidentally slept in his bed and he made a move on me. Right. Because then it would be like the whole family would be like, what the hell happened? You yeah, you shouldn't have been in that bed. I would be like, still got it. Yeah. There's it makes no sense. He was just mean? trying to do some little boy ass play. He's been that's that's facts. Uh, he said he's dating his the girl for three years and he didn't want the brother to think he was banging his sister. That's kind of weird. Yeah, that is kind of weird. They've been dating for three years. I think he probably knows. And he was like, at least that's what I think I did when I was drunk. Hmm. Sounds like that. Sounds might like there be might a, be more to the story. Yeah. Sounds like this guy might be embarrassed because oh. he thinks maybe he came on to the brother. Oh. Things got out of hand. Oh. And then he's trying to act like that never happened by blaming it on that guy. Sounds like the brother's trying to take down the whole family. Or, sorry, this guy's trying to take down the whole family. This would be a great way to do it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's um, that's an interesting Thanksgiving. Just bring up politics. Just get everyone off off the off the uh, trail here. It's like, who are you guys voting for? Uh, okay. Before we do the last two games... Amazon Music, hey Prime members, did you know you could be listening to this podcast episode and all Barstool Sports podcasts on Amazon Music ad-free? Simply include with your uh, Prime membership. All Amazon Prime members also get access to the largest catalog of ad-free top podcasts. Enjoy shows like Pardon My Takes, Spit and Chicklets, and many more. To start listening, download the Amazon Music app or visit Amazon.com slash Barstool23. That's Amazon.com slash Barstool23. It is ad free with your Prime membership. Go listen on Amazon uh, Music. It is really great app. So go check it out. Amazon Music app or visit Amazon.com slash Barstool23. You can get all your podcasts on Amazon. If you have a Prime membership, ad free. Look at that. Okay. Next game, night game. We got 49ers Seahawks. I kind of want to see Drew Locke on Thanksgiving. We might get it. I think Gino's going to play. But I too. we don't know how healthy he's going to be. My only note for this game was that we got two interesting uniforms. Niners wearing the throwback whites. Okay. And then the Seahawks wearing their neon greens. Ooh. Which Ooh. I think I think that plays at night. On Thanksgiving? On Thanksgiving yeah, kind of yeah. wake you up. Yeah, it plays It's almost at- like a smelling salt yes. for the end of Thanksgiving. Yeah. I, I think the Niners are all the way back. And I think it was as simple as Trent Williams and Devo Samuel were out. Pete Carroll owns... Kyle Shanahan. Shit. You're don't, right. Don't forget that. You're right. I think this is going to be a better game than people think. I, you know what I would really love to see? Those neon green Seahawks uniforms at night in Seattle, in the rain, Pete Carroll chomping like six things of gum, mm-hmm. look with his hair slicked back, mm-hmm. smiling like slapping guys, doing low fives left and right when they're coming to the sidelines. That's what I'm mentally visualizing when I picture this game. And if that happens, I'll be very happy. This is also a prime DK gets into some type of, some type of fight or argument on the sideline yeah. or on the field. A standalone one? Yeah, there's going to be a, a DK cam. You see him before, before their last game when he went up to the ref, he's like, hey, just so you know, I'm going to block my ass off. But when you, when you blow the whistle, I will stop. Just so you know, though, I will be blocking hard until that point. I, I like that because when you see DK just abusing defensive backs – it looks like it should be a penalty yeah. every single time. But when he does it before the whistle, it's actually not a penalty. He's just rough as fuck Yeah, to throw you around. So he has to let people know, hey, I'm going to be playing football. It's going to look bad, but I'm going to stop playing football when you blow the whistle. Yeah, play to the E in the whistle. I yep. like that. Uh, Hank. Nerd Nugget. Oh, Nerd Nugget. The 49ers have won nine consecutive regular season games against the NFC West, dating back to week 18 of 2021 season. Okay, so that kind of goes in, in the face of the whole Pete Carroll owns Kyle Shanahan thing. Yeah, but we'll stick with it. Okay. Yeah, we don't care. We'll just go with Kenneth Walker. We, we out. pick our own narratives. I just remembered show. Kenneth Walker's out. He is out. That's going to be big. So they got Charbonnet. And I'm, I'm, I know that Geno's optimistic to play, but he missed part of the game against the Rams. He had to come out of the game, and it's a short week. Like they're ha- There's no way he's just magically 100%. Yeah, I'm with you now. I, I want to see Drew Locke. 
Yeah. I would like to see Drew Locke. It just would be a nice, uh, like, like, by the end of Thanksgiving, everyone's full. You're kind of sick of being around your family. Drew Locke is the perfect quarterback to come in to just start a discussion and be like, Hey, yeah, this guy, wait. Like, you know, you can turn to one of your family members and be like, wait, watch. Drew Locke's going to do some fuck shit. Yeah, here's a, a fun thing you could say. According to Von Miller, Drew Locke threw the most impressive incompletion that he's ever seen yeah. in training camp. Yeah. Okay. We got a very long drive between two families, so we will unfortunately be missing actual dinner time when it's getting served. What's the best way to approach the leftovers when we get there? How does that work out? Where you're going to two Thanksgivings but missing both? and you're missing both Just dinners. Just pick one. you got to have one dinner and then arrive for the leftovers. Or the that. other one for th- for Christmas. Yeah. You can't miss both dinners. Yeah, that's... I I, I think you have to go... If, you, if you're going to miss both dinners, you got to go heavy appetizers like in the a first one. situation? Yeah, you got to go heavy appetizers the first one. Maybe stop for a burger. So burger places open. Yeah, they're open. Yeah, they might be open. They do close a lot of shit on Thanksgiving. What burger place would be open? It sounds know. like a, a husband and wife, let's go to your folks place early and then we'll go to my folks place late, but we're not going to have Thanksgiving. So instead of... Pick, pick, yeah, like, I agree. Like, we'll go. Terrible place. Because now you're going to have two families that are mad at you. You got to go to hers. You got to eat dinner at hers. Yeah. And heavy appetizers. Heavy appetizers to start. Yeah. Because I always... I mean, cheese and crackers. I tap out early. Mm-hmm. And I, get, I find my, my strength again. But cheese and crackers, I go, I'll just sit there in front of it and just be like eating all of it. I'll eat a whole block of cheese on Thanksgiving. What, what's your move? Mine is um, <laughs> first thing, I'll have like a glass of white wine to start. And then I'll have some crackers, some cheese, maybe a couple grapes. Yep. And then after about an hour of that, I start switching over to beer. Then it's beer time, baby. I like to do, I like to crack open a Coors Light uh, at the start of the Lions game. I, once, once I see the turkey. Once I start getting the turkey ready to be cooked, when I see meat, now it's time for beer. Yeah, now it's time for beer. Yeah. Uh, okay, last game. We'll do the Black Friday game. Dolphins and Jets. I said this on Sunday. I'll say it again. Uh, I think the Dolphins, they have been taken out of fraud watch for me. I think they're very much for real, and I think they will kill the Jets. We have Tim Boyle. It's Tim Boyle time. That's – I. Okay. Yeah, is he, um, he might be better than Zach Wilson. Can he handle the bright lights of the New York media? Shout out the New York media. We won again. We destroyed Zach Wilson. Yeah. Um, Zach, it, it's funny when you watch like all the different clips of, of Salah over the last year, year and a half, talking about Zach Wilson after a game. He's said the exact same thing after every single game. Yep. Like There's certainly some plays that I think if you ask Zach, he, would, he wished that he could have done better. Uh, there's a lot of plays, though, that we all wish we could have done better. But, yeah, Zach... Listen, he's trying. We saw a lot of good things during the week, and he'd be the first one to tell you he needs to improve, and we believe he can improve. And he said that for about a year and a half, yeah. and it never happened. Yeah. And now it's Tim Boyle time, and their their lack of a plan at backup quarterback has – I mean, it's not going to get held against him because the story about this whole season is just Aaron Rodgers got hurt first game, season kind of a wash anyways. But they they knew what they had in Zach Wilson going into this year – and they had absolutely no other plan. And then I think they decided to ride with Zach to try to keep the locker room together. And in reality, that probably drove the locker room further apart because week in, week out, you've got guys that are playing their their ass off on defense that know that the guy that's playing quarterback is not giving them a chance to win. Yes. So I I guess credit to Sala for not getting like a complete mutiny in his team and for finally making the right choice. Yeah, the only um positive spin zone I would have for the Jets to go to Tim Boyle is that you saw in the Bills game and this happens for NFL teams where if the quarterback and the offense is really really bad there is a definite point where the defense will I don't want to say quit because I don't think they quit but it gets so tiresome because the Jets have defense has been great all year but they also know going into a game if they give up 10 points they lose yeah so that like pressure gets so intense that you have this breaking point where it's like we can't – you're asking us to play perfect football every single game. We cannot sustain that. Every every unit has an off game. So that would be my only spin zone to the Jets, that maybe the defense buys back in a little bit because it's like Tim Boyle, maybe he can do something until Tim, until Tim Boyle sucks. And then you see it again where it's like the defense is, what the fuck? What, what are we going to do? Then they might go back to Zach Wilson. Yeah. Actually, the worst thing that happened to the Jets this season was – Zach Wilson playing really well, outplaying Patrick Mahomes 
in that Chiefs game. Yeah. And then they were like, wait, we might let's give him another couple months here. That was it. That yeah. was it. Sorry, memes. That was the moment. Uh PFT, I have a positive uh note for you. Okay. We had the anonymous player poll on the athletic today. Mm -hmm. Worst stadium in football, not FedEx Stadium. Let's go. FedEx Field. FedEx Field, not the worst stadium. MetLife voted the worst stadium. That's unreal. They said the turf. You they said it's boring. Well, it's did they do this lame. poll before you couldn't shower there after the game last yeah, week? Yeah, I, I don't know, but let's just go with it. Okay, it was right. enough yeah, of yeah, a I'll margin. It. it was enough of a margin of victory for you. Uh, it was 18.4% for MetLife Stadium. FedEx Field was 13.9%. I love it. I so that's pretty good. I'll that's a win. MetLife does suck. It does suck. Yeah, it's just it stinks. It's blah. The entire area around it. It's, it. I don't like stadiums that are shared between two teams. Yeah, you don't get the full vibe. Yeah, no. It it feels like you're just always like uh, a Going weekend. A you're a weekend guest. Yeah, yeah. It's like I'm not home. I don't. I can't. I can't kick my feet up. They're going to change everything in a second. It's Airbnb. Yeah. Uh, all right, Jake, Nerd Nugget. Since the start of 2021, when Robert Salah took over as head coach, the Jets are one of two teams that have thrown more interceptions than touchdown passes mm. with the Panthers. Also, the Jets have benched Zach Wilson in back-to-back -back seasons and replaced him with quarterbacks from Eastern Kentucky, Tim Boyle, and Western Kentucky. Oh, quite. that's, that's a You didn't want to call that Nerd Nugget of the Week? It's coming. Okay, because that... That's in the running for Nerd Nugget it, of the Week. It might be. Also, you got all Kentucky. This is Revenge of the Two of Hands. I want the Dolphins to destroy the Jets at MetLife. Still, for people who don't know, uh, one of the funniest stories that Jake was upset about, but I think it's very funny when the, he went to the game with Billy Jets Dolphins last year is after Tua got concussed and Jets fans were mocking Jake by doing the Tua concussion hands. Hilarious. Revenge. <laughs> I don't think it's moment. I don't think it's a funny move that they were doing it. I, no. It's funny. I, just, I think that Jake seeing that and, yes. and getting like a a permanent scar is very funny. Yeah, I'm gonna say it was a funny funny move. I I, I don't know. I just like <laughs> like NFL fans are savages. I don't know. They, like you, when you go to a game, yeah. all bets are off. I well now that he's okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He by the way, yeah. I mean, what did uh. We'll, we'll talk about it with Florio, with Tua. He he had a nice nugget when we get to Florio. That might be the nerd nugget of the week. Yeah, that might be. Florio might have dropped it. Uh, okay, Hank. Thanksgiving question. Is it really a proper Thanksgiving dinner if people don't talk about the current political and economic state of the world? Turkey or ham, cranberries or sweet potatoes? Mm. Turkey. Turkey, sweet Wait, potatoes. what is the question? Turkey or, Turkey ham, or ham? Turkey. Cranberries or sweet potatoes? Sweet I don't potatoes. think that's. Cranberries or sweet potatoes aren't. They ask the question. You can have both. I usually have both. Yeah, that's not an opposite. Well, yeah, it's a, it's It'd be one or the other. Sweet potatoes or mashed potatoes. That's, that was. Not I take sweet potatoes over cranberry if you're asking one or one or two. That's I think what, I would yeah, take the cranberry because I like cranberry on everything. It's the only time I have the cranberry. Also good for urinary tract. Yep, it's a fact. Uh, okay, let's do our picks, and then we'll get to hot seat, cool throne. So everyone's got to do one pick of these four games. So we'll do three picks this week. Give us the standings. Yes. So for the opening act, we have Max at 13 and 9. Jake at 11 two points, and a two half. Two points. Two points. Yeah. Max at 13. Jake at 11 and a half. And Memes at 10. So Oof. Memes one and a half behind me. Uh, for the main event, some separation. Big Cat, 13 and a half. PFT, 13. Nice. Hank, 8 and a half. Oh, oh no, Hank. Oh. That's not good. Eight and a half. Hey, guy, I but got this a, extra pick could help him. I got a question for you. Um, when we broadcast this, is it going to be broadcast on PMTV or is it going to be on Viva TV? What do you think, PFT? I think. Well, you might. You might be the one that's the star of it, so it might be we would rename it Diva TV for you. <laughs> you walked into that. That's a good one. <laughs> Thank you. I was wondering where you're going with that. <laughs> he just walked you right down the line. You were fucking. You you know what you were? You were. Uh, I was dribbling him. Do 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 dunk. You were in the car with Silvio. What's her name? Adriana. Yeah, that's what you were. PFT with Silvio. You were Adriana. Hey, where where are we going? Take this exit right. Why are we Why are we getting off the road here? That was what you just said. It happened to you. How are you feeling about your bets? And then, uh, I feel dead. bad. I, I was driving last night, and, and I kind of, you know, last week when I heard the record, I was like, damn, I feel like I'm probably going to lose this. And then Sunday, I checked the the scores, realized I went 0-2. It was like, that's not good. And then for whatever reason, yesterday when I was driving, it kind of really set in. Yeah. And I, had, like, started to have a panic attack. So, yeah. yeah, PFT and I have been pretty consistent. Like, we've we've been... 
I don't remember many zero and two. I, we, I feel like we pick up a point almost every I, week. I go one and one a lot. Yeah. I'm not gonna talk about it. I think I'm just gonna you know we'll we'll maybe film some stuff for a vlog to be determined later. Um, I do have somewhat of a plan. Okay, it's gonna be Good. a train wreck, but I'm. You're not out of it though. That's yeah, you're not thing. out of it. I feel like I'm out of it. I'm I'm it's going five, I'm five going forward points. prepared to do the stand up, and I'm just gonna plan to do the stand up. Okay, so I somehow win, it'd be choked by both of you guys. Who's who's picking first here, Jake? I think memes said it's him. So it's memes then Hank then me, all the way around. Okay, sure. Yeah. Memes, uh, memes had to catch his flight. Did he text you his picks? He said he's gonna text one of us. But he said he wanted the Cowboys, so let's right. just give him the Cowboys. So he's taking the Cowboys. Cowboys minus ten and a half against Washington. So you didn't text that though, Max. He said he wanted the Cowboys, right? That's all we have. All yeah, right. the only thing he said was his first pick was Cowboys. Okay, so he's got the Cowboys. Hank, Hank, you have the second pick. There should be, you should be able to get this. I haven't got anything. Okay. Do I fade myself? Do I trust myself? I don't know. So I fade myself. Go, just go. <laughs> Packers. Lions. Right. Packers plus seven and a half. <laughs> and Big Cat takes Lions, so this is huge. This is huge uh, for the competition. Just so we're clear. Uh, do that every just week. so that's we're clear, no thing. matter what you were going to say, I was going to say Lions because I do like the Lions a lot. Got it. I was not. Oh, yeah, sure. I, we started the preview. I said I love the Lions because yep. the Packers should have lost to the Chargers. Yep. I'm, also, to be fair, we don't wait, we didn't start Hank, secretly submitting until like four weeks to go. Also, Hank, that's good for you. You want me to pick opposite of you. He's just thinking worst case scenario. Yeah, right. It's an easier way to gain ground. It's easier way to gain ground if you win this bet and I lose it. You have gained a full point. Hank's on tilt right now. He is. I'm going to take the over in the Niners Seahawks forty three and a half. Love it. Love it. Jake, uh, I'm going to take the Dolphins minus nine and a half. For okay. Bench. Okay. Um, I will take the over in Commanders Cowboys. Okay, so those are our that's picks. forty-eight and a half. Those are our picks for uh, Thursday. Let's uh, get to let's do hot seat, cool throne, and then we'll get to Florio. And after Florio, if anyone has to work on Friday, you can stop there and hear our weekend preview. Uh, before we get to Florio. Kissing Biggie Butterman, big <laughs> butt in the woods. That's not true. That's not true. Oh, boys. Did I interrupt? Mom, you stupid bitch. Get out of here. <laughs> well, pardon me. And pardon my chicken tenders. <laughs> 50, your mom is so cool. And she's hot. She's my stepmom. Oh, okay, well, your stepmom is really hot. Yeah, she is. Yeah! yeah! Oh, yeah. <laughs> Touchdown! <laughs> my boys love their chicken tenders. Part of my cheesesteaks new menu is here. The Big Cat Combo, Chicken Bacon Ranch Cheesesteaks, and Chicken Tenders. Part of my cheesesteak has just unleashed a menu that will have your mouth watering in no time. Hold on to your taste receptors because we're introducing the stars of the show, the Chicken Bacon Ranch Cheesesteak, the Irresistible Chicken Tenders, and the famous monumental Big Cat Combo. Whether you're a cheesesteak aficionado, a finger food enthusiast, or simply someone who values the art of comfort cuisine, this menu has something for everyone. Order now on PardonMyCheesesteak.com. Also available on Uber Eats. We have perfected the cheesesteak. PardonMyCheesesteak.com right now. And just so we're clear, uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but I'll say it. Uh, when you order Pardon My Cheesesteak, when you get a great meal from Pardon My Cheesesteak, obviously no, this shouldn't be uh, like breaking news. We do make money, but we share it with everyone here. So it's it's something that we all, we all share in, uh, producers, everyone. Uh, equal. So, pardon my cheesesteak.com. Go right now. Also available on Uber Eats. All right, hot seat, cool throne. Hank, 
My hot seat is anyone that actually believes Snoop Dogg was off the uh, smoke. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I had I had cool throne. He gave up smoking weed, or he said he said I gave up smoke last weekend, and then uh, surprise, it was a marketing stunt. Yeah, it was a great stunt. It was for a uh, smokeless uh, fire pit, I think. But he, I mean, which kind of looks cool, but no, smoke is kind of fun. Part of a fire pit where you smell, smell it, yeah, yeah, smelling like a fire afterwards. It's kind of fun. Best parts. It looked. Did you see Joe Biden's birthday cake? Yeah, with the eighty-one candles on it. It looked like the thing that Snoop Dogg was advertising. That that was insane. It's a funny picture. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Snoop Dogg saying he quit smoke was like legitimately headline news for like two days. Yeah, he yeah. quit like what fifteen years ago. You remember that? No. He was like, I, I kicked the habit, and then he went on some talk show, and he's like, I thought you kicked it. He's like, yeah, I kicked back. <laughs> back on. Yeah. Uh, and then my cool throne is Covert Operations. Oh. Absolutely love this move. Shohei Otani said he's going to be doing secret meetings with teams, and it will be held against them if it leaks that the meeting happened. Oh, I like that. <sighs> I like that. Shohei to Michigan? I love that. Yeah. I love that. Like, when you have, when you're, you know, that recruited, that sought after... You have all the power. Why not just be like, I'm going to meet with you. And if you say something like it's never happening. This also is great. Because then it gives it gives it gives him like an out to be like, I would have came, but you leaked it. And yep. it's great, too, because if a reporter reports on it and then Shohei doesn't go to that team, we can all blame the reporter. Mm -hmm. That's huge. Yeah. And if you're a team that's not in the Shohei running. You should just leak that you took a meeting with Shohei and be like, oh, it, the only reason he's not coming here is yeah. somebody leaked this. Yeah. Ooh, I like this. Okay. PFT, your hot seat, cool throne. My hot seat is Greg Berhalter. Ooh. The coach of the U.S. men's national team. Out? He should be out. Yeah. Hot seat Greg. He lost to Trinidad and Tobago. Oh. Can't do that. We actually did do that in 2018. That's why we didn't make the World Cup. Uh, it was the second leg of the Nations League quarterfinals. We all know that tournament very well, intimately. Mm -hmm. um, but we beat them 3 nothing in the first leg, so we ended up advancing, which means that we did qualify for Copa America. And then the U.S. national team, after we lost 2-1 to Trinidad and Tobago, um, they tweeted out, like, we've qualified. Like, great job, but you just lost to Trinidad and Tobago. He's won 4-5 and five in games played in CONCACAF outside of the United States. He stinks. We brought him back. He doesn't get along with any of the best players on the team. Fire Greg. Fire him. Fire yes. him. Do it. Get him out. Do the right thing. Get, get him, him out. out. This is the golden generation. Get him out. And Greg's screwing it up before our World Cup. Yes. But we do have a good scapegoat in case we don't do well in the World Cup, and that's Greg. Yes. Are we? Yeah, we're automatically entered, right? We are entered. Oh, we're yeah, gonna, so we we're, can't. We're going to qualify. Yeah, we're qualifying. This, Congratulations. Uh, congrats to the United States for qualifying for the World Cup. Although I am saying, like, I... This is this is when soccer should succeed in America in this World Cup. Yeah. Our, our players are good enough, and Greg's going to screw it all up. Yes. Okay. Your cool throne? Uh, my cool throne is going to be Snoop Dogg smoking weed. Oh. He's still doing it. Nice. Uh, okay. My hot seat is Jim Harbaugh and Ryan Day. We should talk about this game for a second. It is probably the biggest game. It feels like the biggest game in college football in a very long time because of not only the playoff implications, the Big Ten title, but everything that is going on with this rivalry, I'm so excited for Saturday. If Ryan Day loses, I don't know what like he he's he's got to be. I don't want to say he's gonna get fired because he's obviously won a lot of games at Ohio State and he had them. He he almost beat Georgia last year, which is sounds like loser talk. But holy shit, would this be emasculating for him? It'd be great. It it would be great for Jim Harbaugh if they can beat Ohio State in this game. They asked Jim Harbaugh. Like, t talk about the respect that you have for Ryan Day and, and the coaching staff at Ohio State. And he just straight up said, you know, we're doing everything that we can to prepare for this game. It's a big game for us. Like, completely ignore the question. Yes. He hates Ryan Day. Ryan Day hates him. I want to see Lou Holtz doing the gritty if Ohio State loses. That would be great. This is Lou Holtz's Super Bowl. Yes. If he loses this game. Jim Harbaugh also said uh, the team is in one piece like his mom's bathing suit. That was a Ted Lasso joke that he stole. Got it. Yeah. I saw I saw that going I had around. I stopped watching after the first season. I did too, but I saw other people that had watched it that said, "Hey, this is actually just word for word, bar for bar, a Ted Lasso." Game. Damn, I thought I thought Harbaugh was working on a nice tight five. I thought he'd have his own material. Yeah. Uh, the other the other news in, in college football, obviously Jordan Travis getting hurt. That sucks so much. Now we have the debate: Can Florida State be kept out if they're undefeated? I don't think you can. I think that would be one. You have Cardell Jones as a as a as a point of 
uh, a, a backup Impressive. quarterback, third third string quarterback. So maybe the maybe Florida State has to beat Louisville fifty nine nothing in the in the ACC championship game like Cardell Jones did to the Badgers. And it stinks because I had Jordan Travis actually as my Heisman Trophy winner, but I don't think that you can give it to him now. So you have to. So go you have to go Jayden to Jaden Daniels. Jayden, Jayden right. Daniels would be the only logical choice. That's you're making a lot of sense right yeah. now. I they won't leave out an undefeated Florida State. I'm pretty confident, and if they do, like. Everything's a mockery. That's bullshit. Because you, you, it doesn't matter who's starting quarter. If they win all their games in a Power Five conference, like you're essentially saying games don't matter. You're just playing the whole thing on an Excel spreadsheet. We're like, who's the healthiest? Yeah, I agree. I agree a hundred percent. If you if you look at Florida State and you play the game of, well, I don't know if their quarterback now is as good as the one that we saw win all those games, then you're not actually about football. Yeah, you're about like you you are deciding a loss for Florida State. I also think for all the hand wringing we're doing about the college football playoff because you have the whole Texas Alabama problem, I think it will all get sorted out. I think Georgia will beat Alabama, which will then eliminate Alabama and Texas. So Texas is weirdly rooting for Alabama. Yeah, it's their best win. It's their best win. Uh, so it'll be Georgia, Florida State, Big Ten champ, Pac-12 champ. That feels like the the now what the happens easy way. The crazy thing would be like what happens if Alabama wins. If Alabama beats Georgia in the SEC championship game, yeah, I think they would still keep Georgia in. Yeah, uh, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. It depends on what everyone everyone else does, but I, I I think it'd be pretty tough to keep Georgia in if you had like an undefeated Washington, uh, undefeated Florida State, undefeated Ohio State or Michigan. You can't. Yeah, there's then a, they're completely. Yeah, yeah there's there, there's different variables. So any of those teams could also lose. Right. So, but the the major monkey wrench comes into play. If Alabama beats Georgia. Yeah, if the Pac-12 eats itself alive, if Texas catches another loss, then yes, I would agree. Georgia and Alabama would probably both be in with the Florida State and the Big Ten being the other two teams. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'm ex rivalry week. Nothing better. I wish that Texas and A&M were playing on, on – I know. It, did, did they play on Thanksgiving? Thanksgiving usually? Yeah. Night, yeah. They should have played on Thanksgiving. We got the Egg Bowl. That's going to be Bowl. nice. The Egg Bowl. And also, credit – to Washington and Washington State for figuring out a way to do the Apple Cup. Yeah. For so they're going in the future. They're going to continue to do the Apple love Cup it. into love the future. It. I love that. We need we need the Civil War, Oregon and Oregon State to continue as well. Yep. Which will be a great game on Friday. Uh, and then my cool throne is uh, journalism. So obviously last week we made some headlines. People were flipping out about Carissa telling a story she'd already told before. And again, not saying that she's... Uh, just making up stuff willy nilly, essentially saying if she couldn't talk to a coach, or if and the she coach knew said, the coach, if the coach said something like, "I'm not going to answer your question, but your perfume smells great," right? And and she knew the coach. She would use a cliche to update, uh, and everyone was like, "How could you do this? How could how could you?" It's an affront to journalism. It did make me laugh a little bit uh, on Monday night, and this is no fault of Lisa Salters because she's told what to do in terms of what th they want her to report on. When she they broke down to her and she gave an update on where Taylor Swift is. Yep, that was very funny. Yep. So, journalism, we got to make sure we I, keep it. I think the people that were most upset about the Carissa thing were other sideline reporters, right? That want to stand up for their prof profession as they should. Yeah, they like, should. Like, I, I understand that point of view, but I think for the majority of football fans. You're like, well, okay, this doesn't really make that much of a difference. It just became a very quick topic where everyone's like, Carissa's just making up lies, and that's so not cl clearly not what she's doing. Uh, but yeah, it's the internet. People are going to get mad yep. about everything. They get mad about literally everything. So it happens. Uh, Jake, your hot seat, cool throw. My hot seat is Bill Walton. He yeah. was what, yeah. the, what the kids say are on one last mm -hmm. night, late night at the Maui Invitational. He had a handful of interesting quotes uh, including commenting on his play-by-play -play partner's uh, recent loss of his father he talked about he said have you ever done that still there with a vibrator and then with the ice pack on your shoulders uh, so he was just being Bill Walton yeah at the Maui Invitational that's kind of what you get when you get Bill Walton yeah you know like he's gonna do stuff like that I I, I wasn't surprised to hear that you get the good and the bad you know yeah he adds it's loose with it. Yeah. Bill I Walton love him. adds color to college basketball. Big time. Big time. Let yeah. Bill Walton cook. Definitely. I'd like uh, to get him and Al Michaels in the booth together. That'd be great. That would be a, a mind meld. Yeah. <laughs> it would be incredible. Um, my cool throne is Black Friday. You have a huge sale on the Barstool store. 20% yep. off. Are oh, we allowed God. to talk about the specific 
Yeah. Things that were dropping. Plug it up. Plug yeah. it up. Actually, plug I'm going to grab something. Okay. Plug Hank's going to grab some of it. Yes. Plug God. Here to report. Uh, we have a six pack of Pardon My Take ping pong lottery balls. I actually used them for a promo yesterday, so I had to open it, but they're on that uh, shelf right above you guys. Oh, so yeah. it's the five most notable numbers in Pardon My Take lottery ball history. We have six. We have eight we have 17 18 69 and then the sixth ball is a part of my take logo so you can use it for uh beer pong you can use it to play ping pong and say you're the best in the office you can use it for lottery ball drawings uh hank has an ornament of the now r.i.p green couch oh that's sweet yes so billy and i's green couch is still alive via ornament billy sat on every single one of these Yes. So it's got that real flavor to it. Mm -hmm. Yes. We also have a t-shirt. I don't know. It might be in the studio what somewhere. What are you guys decorating that studio, Jake? <laughs> yeah. Get it going. Should I bring my wall of credentials? I have it hanging up in my apartment. A literally yeah. anything. Yeah. Bring your wall of credentials. Okay. I'll bring my wall of credentials. Now we're going to end up putting merch. <laughs> we got to get figure out the camera situation. We'll talk after. Okay. Um, we also have a t-shirt. Like we like said two weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah, it's been procrastination over here. Uh, we it's have a t-shirt of a lottery ball machine in a Heisman pose with a football. It's Love a lottery it. ball like mascot. Love it. Let me see if I it might be out there. I think the corduroy PMT hat that PFT is wearing is is the, the best. I love this one. This this it. might be my favorite hat we've ever done. It's like the Chicago flag part of my take, which just plays anyway, even if you're not trying to rep the Chicago flag. Because it. it's a great flag. It's it a great is great. Design. Yeah. That's a, that awesome. might be my favorite part of it's Chicago, and I like a lot of parts. Super, super comfortable. Also, we did do a deal with uh, 47 Brands, so we have some new hats. Hank's wearing it right now, Just yep, Cover. Just Cover, this hat fits. They're, so, they're the best hitting, uh, fitting hats. I'm wearing actually a 47 brand right now. And the uh, I've got a, we've been wearing them since the summer. Jerry wore it also, Robin Barcel. I wore them during the Ryder Cup. PFT's been wearing it. The uh, navy blue and tan part of my take hats. Got a lot of comments about when those are going on sale. That will also be black. Nice. Mm -hmm. Stell Blue the... Coffees is 20% off. If you want to be a member of Stell Blue Coffee Club, that's also the membership. Yearly membership is 20% off. If you're watching on YouTube, it's the Heisman. I guess not really Heisman. Oh, I but love it. Lottery ball mascot yep. holding a football. I love it. I love it. And ugly sweaters. Yeah, ugly sweaters. Everything. Everything's there. Uh, your Tiff, friend, Tiff sweater your good friend, is popping off. Your good friend, Tiffany. Yeah, her sweater's great. It's uh, her saying that motherfucker's not real to Santa Claus. Dave won't be counting that sweater towards uh, revenue. Well, yeah, he's uh, he was hating on her, and he was like, "Yeah, she doesn't she doesn't sell merch. It's the seventh best selling ugly sweater." Wow, look at you! Let's run those numbers up. Step run it up. up. Is it the up. sale running longer and this year? Tiff, uh, Tiff hit me up yesterday, and she asked, "She was like, I need one of those just cover hats." Oh, no. love it! Yeah, love it. Good, send her one. Uh, may have to hand deliver it. I might have to. Might have to. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's get to our crazy uncle, Mike Florio. And then, again, if you are working on Friday, you can stop after Florio. We'll talk about all the Sunday's games. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm sorry for anyone who has to work on Friday. So before we get to Florio, it's time for our interview with Mike Florio. And shout out Body Armor. Body Armor helps us stay hydrated throughout our interviews with the biggest guests in the world, packed with electrolytes and no artificial sweeteners, flavors, or dyes. Body Armor hydrates the best athletes in the world, and more importantly, us during interviews. Buy Body Armor today. Visit the Body Armor Amazon store or retailers nationwide. Available in stores nationwide. Head on over to Body Armor store on Amazon and get yours today with Body Armor, the best drink out there. So here he is, Mike Florio. Okay, we now welcome on a very special guest, one of our favorite guests. It is Mike Florio from Pro Football Talk. You can see him on the cock. Every single morning. You can also see him on NBC for Sunday Night Football. We thought, in the spirit of Thanksgiving week, we should have our crazy uncle who's got takes that firing out of his, uh, you know, every side of his mouth uh, on to talk some football and catch up. So, Uncle Mike, it's great to see you. Uh, let's get into it. Let's let, let, let's get some takes going. Well, you know, first of all, you call me one of your favorite guests. Yes. Yeah. And I hear from you guys as often as I would hear from you if you actually were my family members. Right. That's right. how you once treat family. Exactly. Once a year. I most once a year. Like I've I've been I've been texting it out there about like once a month to the group, like, hey, we should have Florio on at some point. Mm -hmm. And then everyone's like, Yeah, you're right, we should. And, and then, then we, we forget just, it. And then we just yeah. forget. And yeah. now we invite you on for Thanksgiving. Right. We love you. That's why we don't have to text all the time. Are you fake okay. freezing? 
Oh, okay. 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 All right. All right. Mike, we Mike, love you. Mike, we love you. Oh, I love you too. It's all just right, nice cool. to hear from you, you know, more frequently than during Thanksgiving week. Okay. All right. I'm so happy. Mike Florio, not our it's uncle, our Jewish grandmother. Got it. Okay. I never hear from you boys. Go ahead. <laughs> There's a fine line between Jewish grandmother and Italian it's, it's grandmother. True. That's true. Me. A very fine line. They, they are one and the same. All right. So I want to get into it. I want to talk everything in the NFL. I want to start with um, my favorite current Florio take uh, thing that he is on. It is the Bengals. It is the Joe Burrow hand injury. It is a class action lawsuit against the NFL. Uh, tell us where, where, like, you want to sue the NFL. I know you do. No, I, look, your boss is already going to sue them. That's apparently. true. I still can't figure out whether or not it's real or it's a bit. But this whole legalized gambling industry has tentacles that the NFL needs to be concerned about. And I've been sounding that alarm. And here's why. I don't want to cover the lawsuit. I don't want to have to go to court and sit there and watch it all play out because it's very simple. If you're going to make millions from legalized gambling and you're going to have an injury reporting system that is flawed, that is broken, that isn't enforced, and somebody eventually hides an injury and it makes a difference. And Thursday night's game was the biggest example of it. We have the video that the Bengals posted and then deleted of Joe Burrow with the wrist wrap, the arm sleeve, whatever it was. He wasn't wearing it as a fashion statement. And then he suffers the season ending injury the next night. If it traces back to whatever he was wearing that wrist sleeve for and they hid that injury, that's the kind of thing. And we see people file crazy ass lawsuits all the time. This one isn't all that crazy. If I bet on the Bengals and the Bengals hit that information, that would be very relevant to me believing the Bengals could cover the spread or win the money line. That's exactly the kind of thing that could cause someone with legal gambling to do something about it. When it's the days of illegal gambling, you can't do anything about it. You can't do anything about it. You're going to sue over losing a bet that was illegal anyway. But now that it's everywhere, not everywhere yet. But now that it's legal in so many states and the NFL is making so much money off of it, they've got to enforce that rule or they're going to end up in a massive lawsuit. It's just a matter of time, guys. You said that you would hate to have to go cover this lawsuit. Yeah. Like, you don't want to go to court and cover this thing. Yeah. You actually would love to do yeah. that, Mike. Let's be honest. Like, that was you, a lie. You would, be, you would be really good at doing that, too. I, I always say, like, when when things get kind of – when they it hits a lull in the NFL – and Florio starts like doing uh, like the the fan fiction that me and Hank talk about, where you're like, oh, what if this happened or this happened or this happened? Like you can, you know, you, you wander a little bit, you stray, you're entertaining, but you stray sometimes. But when it comes to like the legal stuff, that's where Florio starts cooking. So I actually think that you would love to see this lawsuit get agreed. Involved. You may be right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. And, and and Mike, right. the, the crux of your point is it's not even like obviously there's a gambling side of this because of the legalization, but. How many teams do you think in the NFL are not telling the truth on the injury report? And do you, like, are you auditing it every week? I'd imagine every week you're, like, basically watching all, like, the beat reporters, trying to figure out exactly who's lying and who's not lying. It sounds like the worst job in the world, but I think you're up for the task. No, but I'm not doing that part of it. I just wait for the obvious issues to arise. Like when you watch an Eagles game and Jalen Hurts doesn't have the burst that we're used to seeing, and then he shows up in the second half wearing a brace on his knee, and we go back and look and see if a knee injury was ever disclosed for Jalen Hurts, and then we hear he's had a knee bruise for weeks, and he's never been on the report. That's something that makes you say, why do you even have this thing if you're not going to have obvious injuries on it? And just last week, just last week, Doug Peterson, the coach of the Jaguars, told reporters that the offense has been limited because of Trevor Lawrence's knee injury. And Lawrence himself said last week to reporters, the knee's getting better, et cetera, et cetera. We hadn't been on the report in three weeks. And I asked the league about it, and their answer was to say to the Jaguars, hey, put him back on the report. If they don't enforce it, teams are just going to say, hey, we've got a strategic reason to keep this information secret, especially as it relates to quarterbacks. I'm – extra sensitive to it as it relates to quarterbacks because mm -hmm. those are the guys that make the game go. And if you've got a quarterback who has an injury that is hidden from the general public that is betting their hard-earned dollars, to use Dave Portnoy's line, my hard-earned dollars are being wagered legally on this, and it's not on the up and up. It's a problem. It is a major problem. 
And it's no different than, you know, when you're buying and selling stocks, you want all the information that's out there to help you make your decision. You don't want lying. You don't want inside information to be misappropriated. It's the same idea once it turns legal and becomes this massive multi-billion dollar industry. So if you're hiding quarterback injuries, that's a problem. And that's mainly what I'm looking for. Quarterback injuries that are being hidden by the teams. Yeah. And $500,000, I think that was the bet, right? Yeah. That he made, he could have bought 500,000 Barstool Sports with that amount of money. Mm -hmm. So that is, that's a significant <laughs> damage there, Mike. I, I, just, I, like I think it, a Mike. jury, a jury would be sympathetic. Mike's a silent protector. Yeah, I you like follow it. the rules, people. Follow the goddamn rules. Well, you remember Brady? The Patriots used to yes. just put everybody yes. in the injury report like every week, and it's like it's way easier to say everyone's hurt because in the NFL, why not just do that? Everyone's that, I was hurt. talking to somebody about that. I was talking to Devin McCourty about this the other night at the studio at NBC. Why not just list everyone? Why not overdo it? Yeah. When you underdo it, it becomes a problem. And the reason Brady, remember when Brady was on the injury report every week with a right shoulder? Remember that? Yep. The, the reason they did that was because he would have ice on his shoulder after the games and reporters were like, does he have an injury? Why isn't the injury disclosed? So the Patriots was like, well, fuck it. We'll put him on every week with yeah. a shoulder. So you quit asking us why he has ice on his shoulder. He has ice on his shoulder because his shoulder's sore because he threw 40 passes. That's why he has ice on his shoulder. So they just put him on the injury report as probable every week with yeah. a right shoulder. So they quit asking the question. Why not just do that? Just put it out there. And then they quit asking you the question. Yeah. Um, I, Mike, I have a question about the, the the health of the league overall. So, uh, scoring's down. Tom Brady actually did an interview, I think, on Stephen A. Smith's uh, podcast last week or, ye or yesterday saying that the league is mediocre right now and it's not what it used to be. Uh, is this a concern for the NFL or do they just say, hey, we don't care because we know that we own Sunday, we own Monday, we own Thursday, people are going to watch no matter what? Or are they saying in the league offices like, Hey, the, the product maybe is dipping a little bit. Uh, let's find a way to make it better. I think generally there's a concern, guys, because whenever scoring is up, they flood my email box with statements and press releases thumping their chest at how scoring is up. Biggest weekend since 1973 and this, that, and the other thing. They're always bragging when the scoring is up. So I think they prefer scoring to be up. But the reality is viewership is up. The metrics are the highest they've been since 2015. So we are still going to watch. We have the virus. It's not being cured. We want football. Think about this week, all the standalone games. Monday night, three on Thursday, Friday, Sunday night, Monday night. And people congregate in the multiple millions to watch these games, even if they're not good. The three games on Thanksgiving Day mm -hmm. have a chance to be horrible games across the board mm -hmm. where you have a great team against a not great team in every game. And you know what? We're still going to watch. Yeah. We're still going to turn it on, and they're still going to be able to say the ratings are the highest they've been since 2015 or thereabouts. A little disrespectful to the Seattle Seahawks with that comment. I well, just want to say it up for the Seahawks fans play. because they're – I think well, that's by the Rams. Yeah, there's a yeah. chance the Seahawks get blown out but they're, with Geno's injury. I wouldn't say they're not – they're a good team. The Seahawks are a good team. We can say that. They're a good team, but – Right now, when you consider they've been swept by the Rams, Geno's hurt, and their next four games are 49ers, Cowboys, 49ers, Eagles. They could yeah. be six and eight after 14 games. That's yeah, true. that's very true. So um, it's it's hot stove season, hot seat season in the NFL. Uh, which coach do you think is the first to get fired? Good question. I think your guy, Ron Rivera, will be out as soon as Friday Let's if they go. get blown Let's out. Go. I'm, that's what Cowboys. I'm hoping for. Can, can I like, a, kill me. Kill me, Dallas. Good, Put me out of my misery. Mike, can I ask a question about the Ron Rivera thing? And I want you to tell me uh, all the other coaches. But is there ever a team that says, Are, we want to tank and Ron Rivera is actually bad, so shouldn't we keep him? <laughs> well, I think that <laughs> – I think it's just bad for the overall culture you're trying to instill. This is something Sean Payton explains. You should never deliberately try to lose because it infects the organization at every level. Every organization should be about winning, winning, winning all the time. But if you just organically lose and it improves your standing in the draft, so be it. You embrace it. I think the opportunity is there for Eric Bieniemy to get an opportunity to show what he could do as head coach. Yep. And it's more data for Josh Harris and company to consider as they plan for 2024. And Sims made the point this morning on PFT Live, if they didn't play Thursday, Rivera might have been fired the day after mm -hmm. that debacle against the Giants. So maybe it's Black Friday becomes Black Monday for Ron Rivera, and he's out the day after that Thanksgiving game. Or it could even be Black Friday. 
they might just fire Black him on Friday. Friday. Black, Friday. Yeah. Black Friday is Black Friday, maybe. But I, I agree with you. I think that if if we were to fire or keep Rivera around, yeah, he'd do a great job of tanking, I think. But I've heard from a lot of players and a lot of a lot of people in the league that have said if you show improvement at the end of a season, that carries over into the next year, where you actually have some belief that at least you're playing hard. And it, there's no better chance to give Eric Bieniemy a, a like actual game, um, like study him and how he how he prepares for a game, how he operates during a game, how he handles all the press conferences, all that stuff that goes along with being a head coach. Give him a trial run right now because I don't think that Josh Harris would want to just hire Bieniemy as a head coach without seeing any of that going into next season. I think he's going to want to do a full on coaching search, which brings me to my next question. Wait. Wait for oh okay. Make Hank, sure Hank, Hank was yeah, grabbing, Hank. Hank was grabbing the in here. the breakfast that we I just ordered for ha, everyone. Have a seat. Have a seat. Thank okay. you, Cat. Yes, because he was nervous going to get the breakfast that he wasn't going to be here for this question. Oh, I thought that this Hank. Is, oh, I know. I can already tell wait, you the question. Wait, yes, I, I yes. thought I thought that oh, Hank would be nervous because sometimes he's not allowed to eat on this podcast. That well, that he probably just ate one. Did you eat one? No, I was, I was literally like I did the like put it in my mouth. Then I saw your text. Yeah, I was like, okay. get back in here. All right, so it brings me to my next question, <laughs> Mr. Mike Florio. Everyone, get comfortable. Get comfortable for this. <laughs> one because you and I are aligned I think in our fan fictions that um a lot there's a lot of reasons why Bill Belichick to the commanders makes sense in my head you've got a new owner willing to spend a lot of money it's close to Annapolis he's very close with Navy a lot of good lacrosse in the area looking to restart the whole franchise maybe even rename the franchise Seems like he's done in New England. They leaked that information about the contract, hoping they could get a trade done. Tell me that Bill Belichick to the Washington Commanders is actually a thing that could happen. First of all, let me just comment, if I may, on this whole fan fiction thing that Hank started. And I think Hank's the reason why I'm only on once per year. Hank's got a problem <laughs> with my fan fiction. So when you text once a month, bring Flory on, Hank says no fucking way. Mm. Hank, let me speak to you directly on this concept of fan fiction. I like this. Think about all the crazy shit that happens in the NFL. All the crazy shit that happens, and we react to it after the fact. My job, part of my job, is to say, hey, folks, here's where all the dots are right now. Let's try to figure out the crazy shit that might happen because we know crazy shit's going to happen. So if we can get ahead of it and inform people and prepare them for it, right? I'm willing to throw the dart if it misses the board, if every once in a while it hits the bullseye. So you can call it fan fiction if you want. I call it doing my job. Mm. Boom. Dude, yeah, but, and wait, who else? Yeah, but like that's like it. saying your your job is a fan fiction writer. So like we're both we're both correct. Oh, his job is to report no, on the it's NFL. It's a term. It's informed speculation based upon information that's available to me and 23 years of seeing all the patterns, <laughs> all the shit that's happened. Yeah. I've been living this every day for 23 years. I've seen all the crazy shit that's gone down. Yep. I'm not sitting yep. around making this up. Speak I'm trying it. to project where the ball is moving based upon where the ball has been. Yep. For the past generation, yeah, but you're, 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 a, you're a lawyer, Mike. You know all the technicalities and ways where you can say things where you're like, oh, well, I was just saying this might happen. It's a possibility. I'm, a I'm not, never, I'm not saying it's going to happen. Gonna, I, I, no, I share what I hear and I couch it accordingly. When we you have also, hard you also, report, you also take some accordingly. liberties with. No, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. I, I want to just stop for one second. Mike had uh, the, the line that everyone should look for is informed speculation yeah, like that is what sense. mike does informed speculation which is fine it's speculating but also being informed and it's good for the league yes and it's, and it's good good for us as football fans because guess it what us, it gives us stuff to talk i mean what, yeah. what the fuck else are we supposed to do yeah, what hey, yeah. no about what's gonna right. happen you you need to get clicks on your website so you make stuff up to get people <laughs> to click whoa, that's whoa, fine whoa 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 screw me for trying to make some money and <laughs> no, have i have no problem with that business, mike what are you guys I, trying to we, do i work you at parcel i know i know the game i know the game. You need me on that wall. <laughs> <laughs> he also said he does his job. Who said do your job? Yeah. Bill Belichick. Mike Florio might be a Belichick disciple. You're you're taking offense to to what I say, but I I just see it's a respect thing. It's like because what uh, you say is offensive to me. Yeah, people are gonna click this article, and it's like yeah, it makes no sense. You but don't like, sound respectful when you it. say it. Or, Hank. Look. There's an, there's an avenue and there's a market. As I've proven over the last 23 years, mm -hmm. there is a market Facts. for analyzing what is going on and what it could mean. Yep. And sometimes what it could mean is obvious. Sometimes, yeah, it's a little bit out there. But we have seen so much stuff that happens that after the fact we say, holy fuck, we didn't see this coming. See, I'm trying to prepare people for the things 
that could happen. Yes. And this whole Belichick thing flows directly from that. The things that could happen based upon what has happened and based upon where it looks like things are moving. Hank, can we maybe say, instead of calling Florio fan fiction, Say I that's a maybe diff. say that, like, maybe say he's got semi-informed speculation. You're an informed speculationist. Hey, don't put yeah, semi it's, it, on it, there. informed speculationist is good. I got no problem with that. Fan fiction uh, and suggests that I'm sometimes. just sitting around saying what crazy ass shit can I come up with for clicks? Yeah, let me see what I can make yeah. up for clicks. That's not what I'm doing. There's enough stuff going on that you don't need to do that. There's enough dots to reasonably connect based upon what's out there than to have to go back to the lab and say, what could we co- what kind of story can we create out of nothing? What all right, but what, let me what ask if we you. did this? Hold on, what if we started calling it football erotica? Yeah, that's okay. right. <laughs> that would be fair, been, right? Yeah. Just yeah. <laughs> And Mike, and Mike, speculation Mike. sounds like it sounds legit. Yeah, it sounds so legit. I, I like it. I like it a lot. And Mike, I've been a fan of yours. I like it when you Same. informedly speculate on things. Mm-hmm. Hank does not. Don't let Hank try to tell you like he's trying to backtrack a little bit. There's some vitriol behind Hank, and I think it comes from the fact that you have reported some bad things about his New England Patriots. Hank, can I just say this? I'm sorry to interrupt you, son. Son, I'm sorry to interrupt you at the Thanksgiving <laughs> dinner table. But Hank. Go back to 2015. Yes, go back, Hank. Okay. I was the only fucking guy uh-huh. that called bullshit on it from the get-go. Uh-huh. It was bullshit. It is bullshit. And you would have called that. If you were a fan of any other team other than the Patriots, you would have said, oh, it's more Florio fan fiction about the Patriots <laughs> and the flake gate. I was no, behind was you wrong. 100%. Yeah. When yep. you were handcuffed in the lobby at 345 Park Avenue, I was behind you 100%. And this is the thanks I get. <laughs> No, Mike, I, I, I think these guys are trying to divide us. Like, I, I, I'm not a hater per se. I, I just try and call it like I see it. Sometimes I think, you know, you are an informed speculationist, and, and sometimes maybe you're like, there's a 2% chance this could happen, but you still report it, and the article appears in a way where it's like, this is going to happen. No, no, it doesn't. That That's on you for not reading it the right way, buddy. Mm. That's not on yeah, you. That's reading on comprehension me. does come in play here. Hank is not a world-renowned smart person. Mike, I think I figured out exactly why there's this disconnect between Hank and when he looks at a headline and he gets mad about the headline and it's attributed to you. I read the article. Shut up, Hank. I think it has to do with the new, um, how do we say this, aggregation industrial complex mm. on Twitter. On X.com. Mm. I'm not going to name the accounts, but there's like five accounts. We all know who they are. They basically just like grab the most inflammatory things that they can find, pull out a select quote from an article. They might all be run by the same person. I don't know. I would actually like to get them all on a round table in the same room and talk to them about how they do their job. But I think Hank, re- he sees like a retweet of NFL Rookie Watch. And it attributes something to you. And then he's like, here goes Florio again with the fan fiction. I think your hate is more directed towards those accounts than it is towards our, our dear uncle, my internet father, Mike Florio. And you. Yeah, you for sure. He, he he, why, why me? He definitely is. Part of this is you. A lot of it. <laughs> how, much, how much do you hate those like accounts? The aggregation Mike? accounts is you. Yeah, you aggregate and then bring it to Hank. Yes. You're I, do, in I per- do not. You're in-person dove climb, climbing for Hank. <laughs> I just, yeah, I exactly. just tell him facts. I'm sorry that Hank gets mad about facts. <laughs> oh. I, those accounts drive me crazy for a couple of reasons. First of all, for most of them, we don't know who the hell they are. We don't know who they are. We don't know what they are. We don't know where they are. And they have no real accountability because they're not backed up by some employment interest. You know, you don't have people who are trying to keep their jobs so they can be wrong about whatever. And I think they're about taking whatever they can and maximizing engagement from it, maximizing retweets, maximizing likes, maximizing anything separate from whether or not they're serving their audience by telling the audience the truth. And I have always been very careful dating back to the day we went live, November 1, 2001, to explain what I'm saying and why I'm saying it. Mm-hmm. Are we reporting actual news? Are we reporting based upon, and not even reporting, are we just spitballing? Are we saying this is what we're hearing, but we're not really sure whether or not it's true? We try to make it clear for the audience. And look, it's on me to put the words down that allow the reader to digest it and understand it, but it's on the reader to understand and not warp and twist. And I'm not saying you do this, Hank. I'm just saying it's on the reader to not warp and twist what we've actually said. Mm. These bot accounts on Twitter 
will just take whatever they can and amplify it in a way that is calculated for maximum engagement, even if they're deliberately or accidentally in their zeal to create maximum engagement, they rush to a conclusion they shouldn't because they get so blinded by that that they ignore the truth. We always try to dabble in the truth and in accuracy, our duties to our audience. And I take that very, very seriously. I am always and every day 100% honest with our audience on what we're saying, why we're saying it, what we're hearing. And when we fuck up, we don't run from it. When we killed Terry Bradshaw, we immediately <laughs> admitted that we had not killed Terry Bradshaw. This is this is the point of the Thanksgiving dinner where it's like, wait, has Uncle had too much to drink? Why is he why is he <laughs> pounding his fist on the table and screaming at us? Uh, I like the aggregators just because it puts all the aggregation in one place. That's all I that's the only reason I like them because they, they in they're wrong all the time, but I like to see it all in one place. Hank, you had a question for Mike. Yeah, Mike, I I really do. I, you know, I don't I don't want there to be beef between us. I, I uh, you took a lot well, of it can't be one way me. beef. It can't be you beefing on me and me saying nothing. If you're going to take shots, I want to have a chance to yeah, talk let back. back. So right, that's fine. Two to beef. You took offense to me calling you fan fiction writer, which I thought was honestly yes. just a fair representation of what goes on. Sure. Would you take <laughs> offense to me saying you do choose your own adventure blogs? I choose my what? Choose, choose your own, own adventure. adventure. Like, like the you, little books that you have as a little... kid where you can flip to page oh. 10. Oh, if you do, if you go this way, you flip to page 25, choose your own adventure. Like you hear a little, oh. a little sliver of information and then you choose your own adventure and then that, and go from it, take it from there. It's just a matter of trying to figure out what's going to happen based upon what currently is happening. So if there is some factual development that could point to something else down the road, whether it's the news that's out there, an announcement from a team, a report from someone. You know, Big Cat, you mentioned earlier the reporting from a week or so ago about Belichick's contract that I think is specifically calculated by the Patriots to put everyone out there on notice of the fact that if you want this guy, you got to go through us. Mm -hmm. You're not just going to get him. We're not going to fire him. We want the phone to ring. We want to trade him. I think that that is the kind of stuff we do. We take the reporting from the people who can't say what it really means because it'll piss off their source if they do and pull that thread and help people understand what's really behind it. So it's all part of a broader effort to take what's out there and guide people. That's what it is. It's a it's a map. Yeah. What we do is a map yep. to where the treasure might be buried. Mike Florio informs speculationists, we're going to find out why. <laughs> That's That should be your tagline right there. Because that is, nah. you're trying to find out why. You're trying to find the why. We're going to get back to Mike Flory in a second. He's brought to you by Morgan and Morgan. It's the holiday time. I want everybody out there to be safe, all right? There's so many ways you can get around safely. Don't drink and drive. Get an Uber. Get a cab. Have a friend drive. Morgan and Morgan will have your back if you happen to be in an incident with somebody else that runs into you. Morgan and Morgan is the power of the people in your hands. 35% of all fatal accidents occur between 6 p.m. and midnight. People age 25 to 34 have the highest amount of drivers involved in car crashes. People age 15 to 24 have the highest rate of emergency room visits due to car accidents of all age groups. And Morgan & Morgan is America's largest injury law firm. They have over 100 offices nationwide. They have more than 800 lawyers. With over $15 billion recovered for over 300,000 clients, Morgan & Morgan has a proven track record of fighting to get you full and fair compensation. They've been fighting for the people for over 35 years. Submitting an injury claim with Morgan & Morgan is so easy. Entertaining clients is hard. Submitting an injury claim with Morgan & Morgan is easy. Winning the PMT lotto is hard. Submitting an injury claim with Morgan & Morgan is easy. Moving to Chicago is hard. Submitting an injury claim with Morgan & Morgan is super easy. Uh, parking your car in a parking lot without running into a pole is difficult to do. But submitting an injury claim with Morgan & Morgan is easy. If you are ever injured, you can check out Morgan & Morgan. The fee is free unless they win. For more information, go to ForThePeople.com slash PMT or dial pound law. That's pound 529 from your cell phone. That's ForThePeople.com slash PMT or pound law, pound 529 from your cell. This is a paid advertisement. And now, here's more Mike Florio. Um, Mike, I was thinking about this last night. Dawned on me. This has to be the weirdest, or maybe not weirdest, but um, the latest we've been in an NFL season where I don't think we know who the MVP is because no one has really been that out of this world good 
Uh, do you have like do you have an inkling of who? I mean, it's Lamar, it's Patrick Mahomes, it's Tua, Miles Garrett, Miles Garrett, Trent Williams. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're they're really good <laughs> when he's on the field. Yep. Um, who do you think should win MVP? Because don't you think this year is a little weird that there's not one guy who's completely – Max is shaking his head that it should be Jalen Hurts. He has not played – A.J. Brown. A.J. Brown, he's saying. Okay. Uh, A.J. Brown had one catch for eight yards Jalen on Jalen Hurts is the betting so favorite to win the MVP case. right now. Jalen so. Hurts has, has he's played betting, better last year. He's the betting favorite to win the MVP right now. Okay. All right. Can we let, Jalen Hurts, can we let Mike Florio answer the question, Max? Thanks, Max. Thank you, Max. I've got one of the votes, <laughs> and I don't know what the rules are or aren't. Nobody's ever sent me a pamphlet on what I can and can't say about the deliberations and the process. And it's not like we all meet and talk about it. We each just put in our ballots. There's 50 voters. We put in our ballots a few days after the season ends. Here's the way the MVP, in my view, has evolved, especially now with only one top seed, one buy per conference. It used to be the one seed and the two seed had a buy. Now you got to have the one seed to have the buy. I think once the season ends, and we know who the teams are, AFC and NFC, who have that top seed and who have that buy. The most valuable player who has helped uh, secure that most valuable position going into the postseason, NFC, AFC top seed, the best player, the most impactful player, the most important player from those two teams, I think become the de facto final. becomes a team and, award, yeah. And, and Miles Garrett is a legitimate MVP candidate if the Browns end up coming out of this morass in the AFC where everyone's got three losses, Jaguars, three losses, Dolphins, three losses, Browns, three losses, Ravens, three losses, Chiefs, three losses. Whoever ends up being the one seed, if it's the Browns, who else? Who else would get your MVP vote right. from the Cleveland Browns? There's nobody else. Miles Garrett stands out among the rest. So if the Browns end up with a one seed, and he doesn't even have to get within a sack or two of the all-time record. If the Browns end up with a one seed, he's their MVP candidate. And it would be in the NFC, if it's the Eagles, Jalen, Jalen Hurts. Hurts. Yeah. If it's if it's the 49ers, who the hell knows? Christian McCaffrey if it's probably. The Lions, yeah. I mean, it's Christian McCaffrey or Brock Purdy. Trent or Williams. Trent Williams. Yeah. If yeah. if it's the Dolphins, will Chris Sims cry? If it's the Dolphins, how is it not Tyreek Hill? Yeah, that's true. How that's a good point. How is Tyreek Hill not more valuable than Tua Tonga Valoa? Which guy is more responsible for them being the one seed if they're the one seed? I think it's Tyreek Hill, and I know Sims does as well. If it's Tyreek Hill, but. I, that's what it's become. Unless there's some guy out there who has just a crazy ass season like Adrian Peterson in 2012 when he made a late run at the single season rushing record and he beat out Peyton Manning in his first year with the Broncos when they were the one seed in the AFC. It takes something like that. Mm -hmm. And that's why here's another here's another point, too. They just started last year. It used to be one vote per voter for MVP. Now you rank them one through five. Mm. And I can see a situation this year where like a C.J. Stroud gets enough second place votes that he gets enough total points to overcome whoever gets the most first place votes yep. because he could be second person on most of the ballots. Mm. And maybe a few rugby scoring first, so yeah. Yeah. First, and, and he could end up he could end up pulling like an inside straight and winning MVP that way. That that interesting. What, what about the, the Lions? You were about to say who would be on the Lions. I don't know. I mean, would you really vote Jared Goff yes. for MVP? Yes. Yeah. In fact, yes, he's my front runner right now. Yes. He played bad against the Bears. The Bears defense has been better well, than we I'll thought. Well, I'll get it this way, guys. If the Lions end up with a one seed, I think whoever ends up with the one seed in the AFC, their candidate is more viable, whether it's Lamar Jackson, Patrick Mahomes, Tyree Kill, or Miles Garrett. Okay. Or Trevor Lawrence. Just I think between Trevor Lawrence and Jared Goff, I'd be more inclined to go Trevor Lawrence. To Anon will remember that you just will not say his name. It's like poison on your mouth. I Don't put me in that same category yeah. with Chris Sims. Yeah, you I are. love Tua. Mm -hmm. and, and Tua, hey, you know what? We had an item over an item of fan fiction over the weekend, Hank, that I hope you saw <laughs> on all the injuries to quarterbacks this year. There are only five starting quarterbacks who have been unscathed. Ooh. No injuries during games, no presence on the injury report, and Tua is one of the ones on. who has made it this far without being injured in a year where every quarterback virtually has been injured. One of them ones. That's cool. Uh, you, you actually didn't address the previous question, though. Bill Belichick, yeah. where is he coaching next year? Oh, we, we never got a chance to have the conversation. Look, the first report that came out October 29 – on NFL Network about his contract. Like they acted, and, and look, I, I, I need to be careful how I say this, but I think I've said it in other platforms. I mean, it, they, they kind of made a bigger deal about it than it was because it was incomplete information. 
lucrative multi-year contract. Yeah. And I think it was calculated by someone close to Belichick to get everyone to stop talking about Belichick possibly being fired during the season. That's what I think. I don't know that. Informed speculation, that's what I think. Then three weeks later, same reporter, same network, we hear that, oh, it was a brand new contract covering 2023 and 2024. And oh, by the way, the Patriots aren't inclined to fire him during the season because they'd like to trade him. So now we have a different, and I think that's Patriots version mm -hmm. that's put out there. So whether it's the Commanders, whether it's the Buccaneers, whether it's the Panthers, whether it's the Chargers, anyone out there that wants him knows you got to work with us. You got to deal with us. You got to give us something we like before you get him. So guys, what I believe is happening and what will happen, fan fiction, choose your adventure, inform speculation, whatever you want to call it. I think what will happen behind the scenes over the course of the next six, seven weeks, they'll work out a deal. If there's a deal to be made, it's going to be worked out quietly between the Patriots, wherever he's going to end up, and Belichick. And then after the season, the dominoes will all be lined up, and it's just a matter of flicking the first domino at the right time, and it'll all fall together the way that we won't know until it happens, but it's happening now. So the teams to watch that I mentioned, Buccaneers, Panthers, Commanders, Chargers, those are the four I'd watch most closely. And of those, the one that I think is the most fascinating is the Buccaneers. Mm. And JoeBucksFan.com and Ira Kaufman, I don't know if you guys have ever had him on. He's excellent. He's been covering the Buccaneers forever. He's a firm believer that this fits the MO of the Glazers. Ooh. Go out and hire a big name, put butts in the seats. They can't get people to come to the games now they don't have Brady. Go after Belichick, put butts in the seats. If he wins, he wins. If he doesn't, he doesn't. We're going to make money in the interim by filling up our stadium. I don't know if I don't know if a coach fills up a stadium like that. There's it could generate some excitement, yeah, I guess. That, but what once you start, if you lose, then right. people aren't going to come out. Oh, you're right. You're right. Coach. He's it not also, some charismatic figure. It's yeah, not like yeah. bringing in Nick Saban. Right. It's not. You're not going to see the coach. You're going to see the yeah. idea that the coach will make the team good. It also right. feels like a little desperate. Like if if we're looking about if we're thinking about like a relationship. You break up with somebody, your girlfriend moves to a new city, and then you move to that new city later, and you're like, hey, I'm here too. Yeah, it's kind of fun. Like, that seems, it seems like a weird move for Belichick to follow in Brady's Agreed. footsteps. Agreed. I agree. And, and look, it's got to be a place he wants to go. And I know some folks out there think it's going to be the Chargers, because why? They've got Justin Herbert. What was the thing that Bill Belichick needed to be successful? He needed a great quarterback. He hasn't had a quarterback since Tom Brady left. And wherever else you would go, you're hoping like you hope Sam Howell becomes the guy in Washington. And he's shown signs that he could be. But Justin Herbert is the one guy that you look to and say franchise quarterback who is caught in a dysfunctional situation. Maybe that's where Belichick would want to go. But the other side of it, too, how much power is an owner going to want to give him? Do you do you put guardrails on his personnel authority or do you let him just run everything like he has in New England? And I would say that it's Belichick, the GM, that yeah. has been the bigger problem than Belichick, the coach. So do, like, do you force him to bring back Scott Pioli or try to hire Nick Casario, one of the two guys that was with him when he was putting championship teams together? And at the end of the day, it all goes back to quarterback. You got to have a quarterback. You got to have guardrails on Belichick's GM powers. And then you just got to let him go do his thing, which is coach a team, arguably as well as anyone has ever coached a team in it, league history. It also feels like Belichick has lost a little bit of, you know, for the longest time, he was ahead of the curve because he was like, it's all about positional flexibility. Get these guys who can play multiple different ways. You know, your 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 linebackers can be on the line, all this stuff. Uh, now it, it feels like the league is like, you need just fast guys. You need freaks. You need these, like, guys who are – you need three or four guys that are better than everyone, and if you don't have that, you're not going to be in the conversation. I, I had a question, though, Florio. So you mentioned Chargers, and there's another name for the Chargers. And I want to know what uh, – you've probably d dug in the legal part of this. Is the NFL going to try to uh, suspend Jim Harbaugh if he tries to go back to the NFL? Well, and this gets back into the fan fiction. What? What was that, Hank? Hold on. Time out. Oh, speculation time bucket. out. Hank? Just so you understand. Go no, ahead. That was, uh, I, that was something I hadn't heard before, and I'm sure Mike will explain. Well, they did it to Jim Trestle. What the reason well, would be. No, they preemptively guys, suspended guys, him. Yeah, they, they, they let Trestle they, – Trestle couldn't jump to the NFL. And, and here's the key, and it's about reading tea leaves wow. and understanding how it all fits together. When the See? media outlet owned by the NFL, mm -hmm. people don't realize, like a lot of fans don't realize go. that NFL Network owns and operates 
or the NFL owns and operates NFL Network. I think they just think it was licensed or something. The NFL owns it. The NFL operates it. The NFL calls the shots on how NFL Network does its business. And when they come out and say on a Sunday, because it's always on a Sunday, Sunday Splash Report, as Sean Payton calls them, when they say that the NFL might duplicate whatever punishment the NCAA imposes on Jim Harbaugh, that tells me the NFL is thinking about it. It wouldn't be on the NFL's network yep. if they weren't thinking about doing it. They have no basis for it. There's no rule he would have violated. It would be a clear antitrust violation. It would be collusion. It would be illegal. But what's Jim Harbaugh going to do? Sue? That's the thing. They did it to Jim Tressel, and he just took it. And so I think what they did, they put that out there at a time when owners are thinking about, who am I going to try to hire after the season? Mm -hmm. You, you, you drop that turd into the punch bowl and you think, I better I better think twice about Jim Harbaugh because I don't want to hire a coach that's going to be suspended the first six, eight, ten games, whatever of the season. So you shy away from him. See, I look at it as kind of a clumsy effort to blackball him, to keep him out, to scare teams away from hiring. Kind of like, I, I, you know, he was a big Kaepernick proponent. It's kind of like what they did to Kaepernick. You say the right thing at the right time and you scare your teams away from doing business with the guy. I believe they did it to Kaepernick and they could be planning to do it to Harbaugh. It, wow. doesn't, it doesn't make any sense at all from a legal standpoint. Like there's the NFL is not college football. How do you punish somebody for a violation, not of a law, but of kind of a nebulous rule in college football that you haven't even be, been convicted of yet? How do you punish somebody for that at the next level? Just make it up. You just, this is what they do. And this is why they hate me and I really don't care. It's like they, not, they can't hate me more than they already do. They make it up as they go. They decide what they want the outcome to be. And then they work backward to come up with something to justify it. And, and if someone sues them, fine. We'll just bury you in paperwork. We'll drag it out as long as we possibly can. We'll try to force it into arbitration that we control. They do whatever they want to do. It's one of the realities of having that much money and that much power and that much influence. They do whatever they want to do. So if they don't want Jim Harbaugh back, he's not going to be back. And if there's a price to pay on the back end, they'll fight like hell to avoid it. But if they have to do it, they'll do it. Yeah. That's where it comes from. There's no rule that supports it. But if they want to do it, if Roger Goodell wants to do it, He'll do it. I like See, Hank. I like this, Florio. He stands on the side of justice. Yes, Hank. He just took you to, to school there. You had never even thought about it. Florio is the one who's doing informed speculation here and being like, "This could absolutely happen." You yeah, guys asked me the question. Yeah, do you want to yeah. say sorry? In this case, in the Harbaugh case, yeah. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I don't need an apology. I just want you to understand. This is how we do what we. This do. is how we do it. This is what guys do. We inform. We, we inform speculationists, finding out why. Mike Again, Florida. like I'm not trying to start a beef, Mike. I, I do like you. I thought that was very interesting. What you just described about starting at the end and working your way back sometimes feels how you write articles. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you're not trying to start a beef, though. Mike, yeah. Mike, you're not, let me, I'm not trying to start a beef, no. yeah, but I no. question the very way you do your business. No, but I'm not no, trying yeah, to start a yeah. beef. But you just make stuff up, is yeah, what yeah, Hank said. Yeah, I man. Listen, I stand on Mike's side. On this. Just a couple breadcrumbs for you to, for you to think about, Mike. Uh, Michael Rubin, good friend, Josh Harris. Good friends, Robert Kraft. Think about that. Uh, Josh Harris hey, listen, also I'll, 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 listen, went to I'll business school with, I think, Kraft's, Kraft's son, I believe. Correct. You're correct. Yeah. Let me tell you, I, I wasn't looking for this. Somebody that I know that I've known for years that works for one of the teams said to me via text whenever we first mentioned this, maybe a few days before because I pondered what to do with it. Watch Belichick to the commanders after the season. I believe it's going to happen. So when somebody who I've known for years, who works for a team, tells me that, I mean, what's the point of being labeled an insider if you don't use the information you get from the people who are with the teams? And if this is what people in the business are talking about, we tear down that wall and share it with the audience. That's an example of, I don't know what the fuck's going to happen. But it's interesting to me that somebody I know and somebody that I trust is saying, mm -hmm. watch Bill Belichick to the committee. I think Hank, Hank's bitter because I just kind of made up that report at the start of October, and then other people started reporting it. So Hank was just mad at, at my previous just makeup of a report, but it's actually real. What about the other side of it? Vrabel to New England. What are the chances of that? Hey, this is one where somebody else I know and somebody else I trust. The email came through on the 4th of July. Something to think about. Something to think about. Post Bill Belichick, will Mike Vrabel end up as the head coach of the Patriots? They put him in the team's Hall of Fame this year. Mm -hmm. Now, 
The understanding is that the job has been promised, and I don't know how binding the promise is, but the idea is Gerard Mayo is the successor to Bill Belichick. Whether or not this thing has gone so far off the rails that they just want to eradicate everyone connected to Belichick out of the building, that's a possibility. But there's all this talk about Vrabel's job security in Tennessee. Look, the question isn't, should the Titans be thinking about moving on from Vrabel? The question is, should Vrabel be thinking about moving on from the Titans? I think the Titans are kind of sneaky dysfunctional, and the only thing keeping them from being a full-blown hot mess is Vrabel. And there may be a point where he goes to the owner, Amy Adams Strunk, and says, I, I just think it's time for me to go back to New England. I mean, I'll stay if you want. I got a contract. I, I don't really want to be here anymore. I don't feel like this is working. If we can work something out. And, and wouldn't it be funny if whatever the Patriots would get in a trade for Belichick just becomes whatever they send to the Titans to try to get Vrabel. Hmm. But Vrabel's definitely a name I've been watching since July 4. And, and who knows what's going to happen? I don't know what's going to happen. Nobody knows what's going to happen. But the reality is shit is happening behind the scenes now that we're never going to know about until it ultimately unfolds. I love it. I love it. All right, rapid fire, Mike. Ready for this? Uh, first rapid fire, give me your Super Bowl and Super Bowl winner. I said Chiefs 49ers before the season. There's no reason to change that now. And if the 49ers keep their nucleus of key players healthy, the 49ers win. Okay. Uh, coach or player – Surprise retirement. You, you, wait, you're going to chastise me for fan fiction and you want me to just pull out whoa, of my hat? Whoa, 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 whoa. I find when I have ever chastised you for fan fiction. Okay. Well, I know, whole, your, whole, I know whole, your vibe. I like your vibe. Yeah. I, 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 I haven't thought about surprise retirements. I haven't thought about surprise coaches walking away. Mm. Um, I, I haven't thought about it. I'll give you one. Okay. Travis Kelsey. Yeah. Yeah. I, look, the guy is thinking about his next career. Right. Clear. Right. He did all that. But before Taylor Swift, hosting Saturday Night Live, there was a long article in Vanity Fair or GQ, one of these magazines, where it's clear he wants to be an actor. Mm -hmm. He just, you know, he wants to be a star and make a shitload of money and more power to him for doing that. You got to know when to make the transition. And when the window's open, you got to jump through it. And it may be that the window for him is never more open than it is right now. or will be after this season. And he's so I, I can get behind that. And he's looking a little bit older. It's like, hey, maybe, you know, and also maybe you get Taylor Swift. Maybe they get more serious. And she's like, hey, I, I want, you know, I want you to be able to walk around with our kids and your knees hurt, and your head hurt. Mm, just something, just something. Throw that's your there. fan fiction. Not yeah, mine. that's my fan fiction. Uh, my rapid fire question. Why did Salah wait so long? And did he lose the locker room by waiting so long to bench Zach Wilson? Well, I think Aaron Rodgers is the guy at the heart of everything that has gone wrong with the Jets this year, because after he gets injured, he starts talking fairly quickly about coming back this year. And I think it kept the Jets as a practical ma matter from even seriously considering an upgrade. Not that they were going to trade for Kirk Cousins, but you can't trade for Kirk Cousins if Aaron Rodgers is planning to come back if you get to the playoffs and say, hey, Kirk, nice job. Go sit your ass on the bench. I'll take it from here. Like, it doesn't make sense to bring in someone who's going to make the team a playoff contender and then contend with the idea that Aaron Rodgers is coming back. So I think because of this notion that Rodgers wanted to come back, the Jets felt like they had to stick with Zach Wilson and hope that the defense would carry them and hope that Zach Wilson would develop into something he's never been and hope that they could hold it together long enough. I was told by someone that I trust deeply about the Jets situation a week or two ago. The latest for Rodgers to return is week 16 against the Commanders. They have to be 7-7 seven and seven or 8-6 and six for it to matter. And I just think it's, it's, it's done now. After Sunday against the Bills... Zach Wilson to the bench, Tim Boyle in, it's done. They've thrown in the towel. I don't think Rodgers is going to come back. And he's going to be able to say, hey, I was ready to come back. I did my part of it. The team just didn't do their part of it. And then they load it all up again for next year. And I think Sala comes back because of that. Joe Douglas comes back because of that. They're not going to want to upset the apple cart. They're going to go even more all in. They're going to go get Devontae Adams, or at least they're going to try to next year. More all in with Aaron Rodgers. Hope he can stay healthy at 40 going on 41 and see where it goes. So I think Salah's safe. I think Douglas is safe. Rodgers, I think, is more of a problem in all this than anyone has ever said, and they're going to try to do it all again next year. When Rodgers said, 
I'm going to try to come back later on this year. That was like dad's going to the store. He's going to pick up cigarettes and milk mm -hmm. and he'll be back. So just behave yourself for a while because I'm coming back. And I don't know if he ever actually thought he was going to come back and play. I think it was mostly like, hey, let's see if I can just make these guys play hard because there's a chance that I might come back in their own heads. That's part of it. Look, that's the glass half full side of it. He's trying to get these guys hope, give them a reason to fight, give them a reason to hold together, not in fight. That's one of the things he said. Don't point fingers at each other. I mean, he's had some good messages for the team, but I also think that this is his way of staying in the spotlight. I don't think he can resist that. Make it about him, be the center of attention, get people to listen to everything he says, get people to talk about him and think about him and what could be if Aaron Rodgers come back. What could have been for the Jets this year mm -hmm. if they had just played well enough that Aaron Rodgers could have come back like Walt Frazier, right? Is that the guy? Was it Walt Frazier? Who was the guy that came back? Willis Reed? Willis Reed. Walt Frazier, Willis Reed. Yeah, yeah, they know who we mean. Yeah. Willis Reed. <laughs> The new age Willis Reed, that's what he could have been. The Willis Reed didn't have a very good game that game. Remember, he scored, I think, the first bucket, and then that was it. People but forget it was, that. It, was, yeah. it pumped him up. All right, my last question, Mike. Uh, rowback question, RHOBACK.com, promo code TAKE, 20% off your first purchase, Q-zips, polos, hoodies, joggers, shorts, rowback.com, promo code TAKE. Also, before I get to my last question, please, everyone, Mike is an author. He's an acclaimed author. He has a new book out for Christmas. Fan fiction. Fan fiction. Do support him. We love Mike. We, 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 we seriously, he has done a lot for us in our career. Um, we've actually done a ton for him and his cool factor. Uh, so please do support Mike. If you, if you like to read, nerd, go buy Mike's book. It's very, very good. Uh, he sends me all of them. Um, and you've never read one of them. You've never even opened them up. But, but Mike, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm doing the plug right now. That's friendship. Right. I'm, I don't, I don't read. If I read, I would read that. Father of Mine was very good. Go by Father of Mine, the too. Ever, the Everclear song? Did you read it? Did you read Are it? Are you talking I, about Everclear? I didn't read it, uh, but I know people oh. that have read it. Was a little, my dad died, so it was like I didn't want to I didn't want to dive into that whole thing, Mike, if you want to bring that up. But, no, I heard other people say it was it I heard other people say it was a great book. So like Bill I, Walton I, I, over here. Uh, yeah. Mike, <laughs> last question. What is the, what's the Mike, big well, Mike Florio story? What, what, what were you going to say? We didn't get to, we didn't get to finish the pitch. Oh no, we finished the pitch. That, that's no, been done. We're, we're, we're also we what's the name of the book? Big also, book. also, just so you know, when we do these like pitches on the show, little little industry trick, we cut it after, so we don't okay. actually put this in the podcast. Okay, I'll keep that in mind the next time you invite me on. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. What, what what is the book called? Here it is. The book is on our way home. It's a Christmas tale that I wrote a couple of years ago. Throughout the month of December, I, it's an idea that I'd had for 10 or 15 years, and I just started writing it right after Thanksgiving, had it done before New Year's. We posted it a chapter at a time on the website last year, like an advent calendar, like every day we put up a new chapter. People really liked it. So I thought this year, let's print it up. Let's make it available. $3.99 for the ebook. $9.99. You can have this for, for $9.99 at Amazon. $9.99. It feels good. It weighs about a pound. It looks good. My nephew, Anthony Zeech, did the cover. Very well done. It ties into the story and it actually is good. It really, if you ever would happen to accidentally read it, it is really good. And every penny I make goes to our local animal shelter, the Humane Society of Harrison County. I'm not making a dime off of it. In fact, for the first 10 grand I make, I'm just going to put it in pre tax. I'll pay the tax on it. I don't care. I want to support the animal shelter. I've got a dog now. When you guys were here yeah. seven years ago, you said you need a dog. Yeah. I took it to heart. Yes. We got a dog. I love my dog. I love dogs. I tolerate cats. The cats benefit too. I love dogs. So every life. penny we make goes to the Humane Society of Harrison County. Love it's a it. good book. And here's the thing. Buy like 10 of them and give them out for Christmas gifts. All right, I'm done. All right. All right. Uh, so Max, make sure you cut that. Cut all that. I, and and uh, also, uh, Mike, I did read one of your books. I read Quarterback of the Future. Yeah. That was yeah. a great book. Yeah. Mike, I you listen, you... you uh, you, I know you love your dog, and that's great that you're doing that. And so people should go support it. Please do support Mike. We do love Mike very much. I do. I do I do consider him a good friend. Last question, Mike. Ready? Yes. What's the big Mike Florio story that you got? Maybe you've already written a little bit about it. It's something bigger coming down the line. What are we, what are we cooking up? What can we get the people thinking about? Big picture. NFL. Big picture. Well, I mean, this Belichick thing has been. Yeah, we went through that. Yeah. And and I really, I really, look, people think I hate the NFL. They ask me, do you hate, why do you hate the NFL? I, I, I love the NFL. I've been a fan for 50 years now. I discovered pro football 
December 23, 1972, the moment the Immaculate Reception happened, we were the only house in the neighborhood that had that game for some reason. They used to black out the games, whether they were sold out or not. And we lived within the the 75-mile bubble of Pittsburgh, but we were pulling a station from out of the bubble that nobody else had. So we got the house full of grown-ups, and they all lose their shit when Frank O'Hara scores. And I just kind of had this aha moment that if it can make grown-ups act like little kids, there must be something to it. And that was mm-hmm. when I was hooked. And I've loved the NFL for 50 years and NFL films and John Facenda. And I hold the league to a standard that I just wonder whether the current stewards are concerned enough about all the shit that can drag it down. And I keep coming back to gambling and all the different ways the money grab they're making for gambling can hurt the league if they're not careful. That's my big concern. I really don't want it to come to fruition. I don't want it to bring down the league. I don't want there to be some agency out there that has oversight of pro football and maybe changes things in a way that will be bad for the fans. I want the league to be able to continue to govern itself, but it needs to do a better job of it or it's going to have problems governing itself in the future. That's the big thing I'm watching. And whatever label you want to put on it, and whether you think I'm up to something or I've got some agenda, I don't care. I want the NFL to be great. And I wonder whether the people currently running it are the best ones to make it as great as I it like can it. It's a good point. You're, steward of the game. You're like the guy that uh, that was trying to blow the whistle on uh, on Bernie Madoff, and nobody listened to him. And you're mm-hmm. like, hey, look into this. Look into this. I appreciate that, Mike. You're looking out for the greater future of the game. That's right. Uh, I, and it sounds like I mean, it sounds hokey, but it's true. It really is true. I'm I'm afraid of what this whole gambling thing can do to pro football if they're not careful. And all they're doing, I think, is grabbing money and they'll worry about the problems later. You're right. You're no, no. You're right. Like I mean. I love to gamble, but it's definitely there's some sides to it that, that people have not thought out long term. I agree. Okay, so we agree. My last question. You have a Larry Fitzgerald jersey on the wall behind you. We were talking about this a couple weeks ago. Did he retire? Is he actually – did he file paperwork? Is he retired? No, the paperwork doesn't matter. He hasn't played in like three years. He's done. He's done. He's done. He's not coming back. Are you sure? It's weird that he never said like, hey, I'm done playing football. He's done. He's not coming back. Are you sure? I, that- I am sure. I am sure. Wait, you know, no fan fiction to be had here. That was a gift that NBC gave me the first Christmas season that we were together. And the only Christmas gift NBC ever gave me. It's a signed oh, Larry damn. Fitzgerald jersey, and it's been hanging up there for years. And I've got a great Lawrence Taylor jersey that I need to frame and put in its place. For my 56th birthday, Chris Sims got me a number 56 Lawrence Taylor jersey. And you should see how he signs stuff. It's like he's written a whole essay down the letter. And he says, you know, three, uh, Super Bowl, two time Super Bowl champion, NFL MVP. And at the very bottom, he writes, a bad motherfucker. Oh, love I it. love it. Love it. He tried to fight Hank when he came on our show because Hank was like talking to the mic, Lawrence, talking to the mic. And he gave Hank this look like, I will kill you. And Hank was like, fair. <laughs> he, back, he backed off. He is a, he's a, he's a bad motherfucker. All right. Well, Mike, thank you so much. We'll put the link in. Uh, can we pin the link to his book in the YouTube? Yeah, we can. All right. So let's do right, that. Good. So everyone, please support Mike. Mike, we love you. Um, happy Thanksgiving. We're thankful for your friendship. And uh, yeah, all the best to you and your family. Guys, I appreciate you all very much. Hank, happy to to have talked through our beef a little bit. And uh, uh We'll continue to write fan fiction and hopefully keep you entertained. Yeah, I think in the Thanksgiving analogy, this is like I'm like, you know, the college student fighting with the with the older uncle. But then at the end, you know, we kind of come to a, a fair. That's what Italians do. Yeah. They they like to hash things out. Yeah. yeah. Like Tommy DeVito. You mm-hmm. do that thing right there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Tommy DeVito. That was my favorite tweet of yours. Italian-Americans like me should be less far fascinated with the Sopranos and oh, far more go. fascinated with the brilliance, quiet, resolve, steady hand of Italian-American Tommy DeVito. Mm. That was your that's, tweet. That's like, it. That's a real right. hero. I, that I forgot <laughs> yes. about that one. Well done. Yes. Very well done. Yes. Uh, all right. Thanks, Mike. See you later. Thanks, guys. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Mike Florio is brought to you by Pizza Hut. Pizza Hut may not have invented pizza, but they made it famous because nobody loves it like they do. From the legendary thick and comforting original pan pizza to the original stuffed crust that taught you how to eat pizza the wrong way, Pizza Hut has been cooking up delicious pizzas and iconic recipes under the hut and delivered to your door for more than 60 years. It's too good not to share. Whether it's a team celebration or just a casual get-together with friends, Pizza Hut's large pizza offers a convenient and enjoyable dining experience for everyone involved. I love stuffed crust pizza. Stuffed crust is the absolute best. No one out pizzas the hut. Order now at PizzaHut.com. Okay, Sunday. 
Sorry for everyone who's listening right now on Friday. Hope you had a great Thanksgiving. I'm just going to go straight down the line. Mm-hmm. Again, we're recording this on early Tuesday morning. Uh, Saints at Falcons. I have a theory. I think the Falcons are going to be good this little second half of the season. Second wind? After the bye. I think it starts right now. We're going back to Desmond Ritter, partially because Taylor Heineke's hurt. I think the Falcons are too talented and too, I don't know. They, they're they going to figure it out. I think they're going to win the NFC South. I think it starts on Sunday. The defense should be good enough. Yeah. So they can figure it out. It's just, can Desmond Ritter stop turning the ball over inside the five-yard line? I think they I think they won the bye. I think they need the bye right now. They're looking up. They're like, okay, look, NFC South. Saints are in, in the lead right now at 5-5. Five and five. We have everything in front of us. We win on Sunday. We take it from there. We got, uh, you know, uh, another game against the Saints. We got another game against the Bucs and Panthers. So this is the Falcons' go time. So the question is, which coach do you trust more? Do you trust Arthur Smith? Arthur Smith. Do you trust Dennis Allen? Arthur Smith. Do you trust um, Todd Bowles? Arthur, Arthur Smith. Or do you trust Frank Reich? Arthur Smith. One of those coaches yeah. is going to win the division. Well, not Frank Reich. Not Frank Reich. Yeah. You can say that. Yeah. Well, are they officially eliminated? Uh, I would say they're officially eliminated. They should be, but they're they're not yet because that division sucks. <laughs> I guess they I could, trust Arthur Smith. They could get to eight wins. I've seen I've seen more promising things out of Arthur Smith that, than out of those other coaches this year. Yes. Yes, I agree. So I, I think it starts now. I think the Falcons start now. I'm high on the Falcons. No re- real reason it's except be- for the bunch of names that they got. It's going to be quite a hangover to get high on the Falcons and then get let down. <laughs> the Falcons have a lot of names that I recognize. Yep. Uh, okay. And also, the Saints, are we getting Jameis? I don't know. I, don't, I, I would doubt it. I feel like they're probably going to go out back to Carr. Derek Carr is going to just be uh, the knight from, uh, what's it called? Monty Python. Yes. It's only a flesh wound. And they're going to yeah. just keep throwing out Derek Carr with various injuries being like, we have no other option. You know what? While Jameis is just sitting there like, dude, I'll chuck it. I've gotten I've become more sympathetic to Derek Carr after Josh McDaniels got fired. And you go back and you read the retrospects on everything that he did to that franchise, how he lied to Derek Carr about a bunch of stuff. Just treat him like dog shit essentially. I've I've started to appreciate Derek Carr. Seems like a very nice guy. Yeah, I, very good teammate. He kind of got the raw end of the deal in Las Vegas. I've never thought Derek Carr is a bad guy. I like him. I just don't really want to watch him play football anymore. Yeah, I would That's rather. Really, all it comes down to, and especially not if he's in front of Jameis. Yes, there are other teams that I could tolerate Derek Carr more on, but if you see you see the really fun option right behind him, it's like you got to go with this guy. Please. The Jets should have traded for Jameis. Uh, nerd Nugget. Do 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 do. Oh, Nerd Nugget of the week. Oh, Hank Hank, Hank he, winced. He winced hard. He's loud. Sorry. Uh Falcons head coach Arthur Smith has started four and six for the third time in three seasons as the as the Atlanta head coach. He has gone on to win the eleventh game in each of his first two seasons to improve to five and six. Okay, so okay. it starts now. I Shout out like Jayhawk twenty two thirty three. Mister Consistency. Yeah, and he's gone seven and ten for his first two seasons. So okay, maybe the new Jeff Fisher seven oh. and ten. Well, uh, that's slanderous. Yeah. We, well, we, Fisher we went to both. a Super Bowl. We love both. Jeff, Jeff Fisher went to a Super Bowl. So Arthur Smith, future Super Bowl participant. Yes. Yes. Uh, okay, next game. Steelers at Bengals. Matt Canada fired this morning. Congratulations, Steelers fans. Ex- I, I'm very happy for you. Except for maybe the elephant in the room. Uh, Kenny Pickett's our friend, but now there's no excuse. Uh, this This big cat is the unlocking of Kenny Pickett. We're that, gonna, we're gonna. That's what you have to tell yourself. If you're a Steelers fan, Kenny's gonna be unlocked. It's Kenny season. This is um, this is similar to someone in mainstream media like ESPN or Fox, maybe getting fired or leaving ESPN or Fox and saying, "Well, I can't wait till I get to go independent and I can say fuck a bunch," and then you hear them and you're like. Uh, this doesn't really work. I get uncomfortable, Trey Wingo, when I hear you say the S word. Yeah, so I- I'm rooting for Kenny. I want Kenny to succeed, but there is no more excuse for Kenny because there was a lot of Matt Canada is doing this to Kenny. Uh, I think that, that you can never say one side gets all the blame. Kenny has not played well. He has to play better. Uh, but the excuse is now gone. Kenny has to show up. I don't know whose call this was because I don't know if Mike Tomlin would have done this in the middle of the season. That It doesn't seem like his M.O. to fire a coach like that. Yeah. This might have come from above. This might be a Rooney decision. Mm. Uh, I think it had a lot to do with one play in particular 
in their last game against the Browns. Do you remember? Do you remember? Don't study PFT. I love this. Do you remember when? Uh, when I think it was, I think it was a running back. He got tackled by three Browns on what looked to be a screen play, mm-hmm. but they just threw a screen play to Warren, and he didn't have any blockers for him. And had uh, two defensive backs and a linebacker that just ran up and tackled him. Mm-hmm. And I remember Jerry in that moment was like, what the fuck? What play was that? Right. And then you go back and you watch it and you're like, I think Matt Canada just wanted his guy to get killed on that play. Yeah. There's no real explanation for it. Here's, here's, uh, I like that. It's a, it's a good deer because I do remember that play and it was made no sense. Here's all the OC, the new OC who, who is, do we know? What his name is? Can we find that? Uh, the new OC for the Steelers. You basically just have to sit down and just circle the middle of the field and be like, Kenny, we're going to have you throw it here too. Yeah. Yeah, because they were just – it was all screen passes. It's all or, on the sidelines. Or just like – like Back a, shoulder. A Pat Fryermuth five yard out. That yeah. was like their shot play. And, and, and the, every now and then they'd throw George Pickin back shoulder like 15 yards down the field. Yeah. The offense was bad, and you have to be super happy if you're a Steelers fan because this is what you've wanted. Again, there's pressure on Kenny now. We have to just admit it. Like, he has not played well, and I, again, we're rooting for him, but he is has all the pressure because you, you, you had the issue with Matt Canada. He is now gone. Kenny Pickett has to perform. As for the Bengals, I don't know. I feel like they, they might rally a little bit behind Jake Browning. I mean, it's a lost season for the Bengals, which sucks. Because it, it just is a reminder, even with a franchise quarterback, like all these things are so fleeting. I don't want to – I've had bad thoughts about the Bengals with Joe Burrow that uh, scare me, and it's the idea that what if you knew it was the good old days when it was the good old days? Because teams change, and when you miss a full season uh, with a Super Bowl caliber roster, that's scary. That's scary for for a Bengals fan. Yeah, because now you're thinking window. Right. Now exactly. You're th- now you've got window talk that you have to deal with. You just th- these things are fleeting. I think these that things only have certain time time shelf. Maybe I'm going to be proven really wrong about the Bengals. I think they have a good enough roster to be frisky. Yeah. No, I, I do too. Like I, I, I don't think that it's just Joe Burrow. And and, that- and you also get the benefit of Jake Browning. He might not be good, but he's got really good receivers to throw to. So yeah. he will be better than bad. All right. Watch this play. Watch this play. All right, I'm watching the play. Okay. Who's the OC, Jake? So no official announcement, but Tom Pelissero says they're expected to have running back coach Eddie Faulkner take over with quarterback coach Mike Sullivan handling okay. play calling duty. Eddie Faulkner. All right, watch this play. There goes yeah, Warren dude. in motion. Right? Yep. And, and they throw out to him. None of these, no one. None of, these, yeah. none of these guys block over here. They've none got, of them. They've got a tight end. It looks like he's a big white guy with numbers in the 80s, so I assume tight end. And then you've got two other receivers out there, three defensive players, it's bad. And it's, it's bad. And he catches the ball. It's the most shocking play that I've seen in a long time. Yeah, and they're all the receivers are running go routes right past the blockers, right, right past the defense. And then all three guys yeah. come up and tackle him for about so, four yards. We got, a, we got a new OC. All right, Nerd Nugget. 315 quarterbacks have 500 pass attempts since the merger, and only one has thrown a touchdown on fewer than 2% of their attempts. Kenny Pickett. Okay. 1.9%. Shut okay, up. that's ludicrous via NFL on CBS. Okay, unlocked. unlocked. Kenny's unlocked. unlocked. That's what that's what we have to go with right now. You have to if you're a Steelers fan, playoffs are a real possibility. Like you, there's a good chance that if you string enough wins together here, that you'll be you'll be rolling into the postseason. Um, you have to think, Kenny Pickett unlocked. And and the schedule is nice because you have two games now against the Bengals with no Joe Burrow, and you also have a game against the Cardinals and Patriots on deck. So. The Steelers, yeah, they got to win. They got to win. Sunday might be a must win. Okay, next game, Panthers-Titans. Nerd Nugget. The Titans have played fewer games against the Panthers than any other team in the league. They've only played six. They're tied 3-3. They've played at least 12 games against the other 30 teams in the NFL. Okay, that was our Panthers Titans. <laughs> I like it. I figured that was coming when you started. <laughs> yeah, with that. I like it. That is a, that is a sneaky underrated. We talked about this earlier in the year, like what two teams never play each other. Titans Panthers never play each other but Six you don't times. think about that because they're so close and their color scheme is kind of similar but right. yeah 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 all right well okay enjoy that yeah bucks cults bucks cults uh i'm also very high on the colts i think the colts are going to be sneaky in maybe the playoff picture they definitely will i, I think colts bills one of those two teams is going to get in i think yeah and so um this is a bad spot for the bucks in the fact that they just went west coast 
Got their ass kicked by the Titan or the the Niners. Lost. I don't know if any of these guys are playing because injury reports haven't come out. But Levante David, Jamel Dean, and Charlton Davis all got hurt. The Bucks secondary was already suspect. They've now potentially lost three starters for this game. So they go West Coast, get killed by the Niners, get a bunch of injuries, back home to Tampa, then up to Indy. Indy's coming off a bye. That's a huge rest advantage for Indy. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a home game in Indy, meaning we have tickets for it. So we got to give do. away tickets. We do. Do you want to do like the worst Thanksgiving setup that you have? Yeah. Like, the worst Thanksgiving arrangement that you're personally dealing with? Yes. If you're a Colts fan? Yeah. Um, if you're if you're dealing with I grossest don't know, plate, grossest we could do grossest plate, yeah, yeah, or just like worst combination of family and travel, yeah, that you're dealing dealing with this week. Okay, so so submit it and we'll give away four tickets. PMT intern at barstoolsports.com. I have a nerd nugget for this game, Jake. Yep, this is the first time in NFL history where two quarterbacks are playing each other whose first names are both occupations. Ooh, Baker Gardner and Gardner. Mm-hmm. Wow. Whoa. How about that? I actually don't know if that's true, but I just said it. I mean, it's got to be. Right? It's got to be true, right? Those those would be the what only What other two. quarterbacks have had occupation names? Cop O'Neill. Yeah, I don't Pater. know. Paint. Well, it's first name. First name. Peyton. No. Peyton. No. Peyton, nope. No. No. That, you know, yeah, what, 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 I was maybe, trying to workshop maybe something. Maybe Jack's son. Yeah. Never mind. Okay. <laughs> I like it. It's a nerd nugget. Yeah, it's a nerd yeah. nugget. That might be a great nerd nugget. Nerd nugget of the century. Imagine yeah. if there was a, a ir- quarterback, ir- quarterback called Cop O'Neill. Maybe Started sweet. for the Jets in the <laughs> 70s. Cop O'Neill. He's your dad's favorite player. <laughs> he loved him. Uh, okay, next up, Patriots, Giants. Henry. Yeah. I actually think the Patriots are going to win this game. Probably. I think it's Maybe. Tommy DeVito having the best day of his life. Patriots off a bye. I don't even know. Bill Belichick said when asked about who's starting for quarterback, he said, I've told every player to be ready to go. I've told every player to be ready to play. So um, they might not even play a quarterback because I think Bill Belichick will scheme something up to beat Tommy DeVito himself. Let's go wildcat all day. I'm yeah. a big Will Greer guy. We go way back. Uh, I, wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't hate seeing him get, some, get, some, get a shot. Yeah. Why not? You know, this Why is not? the last week's game against the Commanders. That was the first time a Giants quarterback threw three touchdowns in a game since 2018. Whoa. Sheesh. That's not good. That's not, I, I also. Pay Daniel Jones. I do love DeVito doing the Italian finger celebration. The best. That's, it's that's the, the best. best touchdown celebration I've seen in a long time. Yeah. So I was thinking about Mac Jones this week, Hank. And actually, this I'm being, I'm being honest. This is not an insult. I mean it as a compliment. Go on. I think Mac Jones could be a very good long-term backup quarterback in the NFL. I think everything that he does well as a quarterback is exactly what you'd expect from like a Chase Daniel type of guy. It's just when he gets pressured, when the blitz comes, he shits all over himself. I feel like we talk about backup quarterbacks a lot in the show and what it takes to be one, and I just don't think a, you know, a top recruit, Alabama starting quarterback, drafted starting quarterback – those guys don't usually transition well to being a backup. Uh, Jalen Hurts was a great backup quarterback. We're talking about backup to starting. Yes. Mac Jones is starter to backup. That's yeah. Very different. Yeah. Right. Well, so is Jalen Hurts. He was two as backup. That's backup to starter. I'm saying it's hard to go from starter to backup. No, he went Jalen Hurts to backup. starter and then he backed up Tua. Got it. Still. But that Mac Jones. In that one game. A, yeah. And then he transferred. Oh no, he no. I think he was there for a full season, right? Because they brought yeah, him that's in right, that's right in the SEC yes. championship. Yes, game. yeah. But he still transferred. He still transferred after that. I just I don't I don't see it. Okay, okay. I, I, just, I was just trying to think of something nice to say about Mac Jones. That's nice. Seems like a good backup quarterback. He could be. I would not hate having Mac Jones as a backup quarterback. He'll get a chance as a backup somewhere. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think you might win this game, Hank. You excited? No. You don't want to win. I don't care. Full tank. Full tank. Full tank. Why not? What, we're, this, we're this far in. Yeah, you might as well. What What does winning do? Yeah. Did anybody get to the bottom of Kayvon Thibodeau's sack celebration he did last week where he drew a heart and then he appeared to open up a, a jewelry box? Because it looked like he was doing an engagement engaged. on the field. Damn. And I knew that the commanders were bad. I didn't know that we were proposed to your girlfriend during a game bad. Mm. Yeah, because you got to plan that before, being like, we're going to win this. I'm going to have so many sacks today. Yeah. That I'm gonna, I am gonna. don't even think it was his first sack. Yeah. I think it might have been his second sack of the game, and he pulled out the ring box. But I didn't I didn't see any reporting about it. I think he might have gotten engaged during the game last week. Whoa. He might have. 
Uh, did we do Nerd Nugget? No. Late credit to Spencey T23 for the last one. Last week, Giants quarterback Tommy DeVito threw t- three touchdown passes. He's the first Giants QB to three throw three passing TDs in one game since December 22nd, 2019. Oh, Daniel no. Jones versus Commanders rookie oh, no. season. I thought it was two thousand. I thought it was two thousand eighteen. Mm. Um, Both but, Commanders. Yeah, but I, I, I did say that nerd nugget about five minutes ago, Jake. Mm-hmm. My flight's delayed. Sorry. Okay. okay. Uh, Jaguars no Texans. This is a great fucking game. Yeah. This might actually be TV one. Whoever wins this game is winning that division. That's my prediction. It's like. I'm so excited for this game because you get this chance to see which team is really, really for real. Because I, I'm going to go even further. PFT, the winner of this game, I might they might be a Super Bowl contender. Dark Horse, mm, little Prisco. Imagine little if the Dark Texans Horse. made the Super Bowl. It'd be crazy. It'd be nuts. It'd be crazy. There, I mean, this is going to be a great, great game. And I, I, I said it on Sunday. I'll say it again. The Texans, they get credit for me in my eyes playing the Cardinals, beating the Cardinals with like a C plus game. And their defense was able to to make some big stops and pick up C.J. Stroud throwing three interceptions. Like you're, I think we know now that C.J. Stroud's the real deal. He's not going to have three interceptions every game. So the Texans are a really good team. They're just a really good fucking football team. So uh, when was the last time a rookie quarterback made the Super Bowl? Was that Big Ben? Probably when they went what like fifteen and one, and Ben didn't really do much. Or was he second? That might have been his second year. I think they made the Super Bowl in his second year. He went 15-1, and one, I believe, because he came in uh, like halfway through the season or after a couple games because of injury. That was not his rookie year. I that think. was not his rookie year. I, I think, think he went 15-1 15, yeah, 15 in his rookie year. That yeah, but they did not make the Super Bowl. Yes. But, yeah, I wonder when the last time a rookie quarterback made the Super Bowl was. But, yeah, I, I do think that whoever wins this game is going to win that entire division. Yeah. I'm excited. Nerd nugget for this game. I'm um, looking up that up right now. I think it was Big Ben. No. Big Ben, I think, went uh, – I think his first year he didn't go to the Super Bowl. 2005. That's what we were just talking oh. about. Yeah. So he was a rookie so in 2004, I think. You might need to take a timeout. <sighs> <laughs> CJ Stroud is just one of two yeah. players to be a top two pick in the common draft era and having a winning record through 10 quarterback starts alongside Andrew Luck. You might need to take wow. a timeout. Yeah, Big Ben 2004 was 13-0 and but did not go – did not win the Super Bowl. That was the Patriots who won the Super Bowl that year. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. You want a timeout? Yes. Okay. Let's skip the next nerd nugget. Okay. Unless yeah. it's good. Let's Browns, bounce. Broncos. Mm-hmm. Oh, jeez. All right, Rams, Cardinals. I'll skip it, but actually, no. It's just timeout. 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 timeout, 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 timeout. We'll do. We'll do. We'll do Browns, Broncos, and and you'll skip it. I have a question for you, Big Cat. Yeah. Is this Sean Payton's best job coaching? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I love that we're having this conversation. We we took a shit all over Sean Payton for the first four games. Oh yeah. Five games of the season. Um, but somehow, some way, the Broncos are are fun. They they're good. Yeah. Like I think they are actually a good football team. And I yeah, I think they're gonna win this game. I think they're gonna be six and five. This is another sneaky game that will be huge for playoff implications. Uh, when you get to the tiebreakers, if both these teams end up in that nine ten win category, yeah, this would be this would be massive for the Broncos. Uh, if you're a Browns fan, you just gotta keep hoping DTR can can continue to not fuck up too much. Joe Flacco, Joe Flacco. I, I, listen, I'm not a Browns fan. I do have a future on them. I'm hoping for Joe Flacco just for my own my my personal legacy. He's played well in Denver. That's true. Has he? The the one oh, the, game? the playoff yeah. game. Yeah, yeah. The playoff game. Yeah, where he yeah. at least in. That one pass. Did he play for the Broncos for a minute? He did. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's what right. I thought you were. I no. thought you were talking about Flacco. I was only on talking about him on the Ravens against the Broncos. This is so it's a revenge game. Yeah. This is Joe Flacco revenge game going back to Mile High. Yeah. His old stomping grounds. I just I, I I can't believe that the Broncos have put this thing back together so quickly when it looked lost. It's also just a nice sign that like e- even if your team looks like they're in tank mode, just string a couple wins together. I wouldn't know what it feels like, but. If you can string a couple wins together, it's got to be a nice feeling. They had the worst defense in the history of the NFL about, what, a month and a half ago? Yeah. And then all of a sudden they're beating great teams week in, week out. I think I think the Broncos are good now. Yeah. 
I do too. Uh, okay, we're gonna skip the nerd nugget timeout. Still on. You're good, Jake. It's it's okay. He, yeah. he Jake put his hands to his head like he just like suffered like a, a terrible terrible loss. Hey, Jake, I love you. You're good, Jake. Love you guys You're doing too. a good job. You're doing a good job. Uh, okay, Rams Cardinals. This Rams got to win this game if they want to be. They're they're at the line in the sand in their season where and there might not be any Cooper Cup. If the Rams win this game, they now are like, hey. We could maybe go to the playoffs. If the Rams lose this game, pack it in, it's over. Yeah, they've got draft picks, so you can, for the first time in a long time, the Rams fans can think, should we be tanking right now? I know it's a completely foreign experience to go through for for you guys, but if you lose the – I would actually be thinking about tanking right now already if I were the Rams. Yeah. Uh, because they don't look good recently. Um, I, I think they're still going to win this game, though, and hopefully they'll get up to eight wins this season. That would be great for some of us, but – um, I don't think they're a good team. I don't think that they're a shitty team, though. That's the thing. I don't think that the Rams are amongst the worst of the worst teams in the NFL. Yeah, not the worst of the worst. If Stafford's not on the team, worst of the worst. Yes. Uh, I'm also just happy that Kyler's back. He is more fun. This is a late slate game. We have four games in the late slate, and this one will be a fun one to be like, oh, shit, Kyler, fourth quarter, has the ball, down five. Mm-hmm. He's got to try to make a crazy play. Yeah, I love it when teams put a QB spy on Kyler because they don't even approach him to try to tackle him. Yeah. They're just like, please just don't run past just us. Try to funnel him out of bounds. Yeah, which he'll do. He yes. will do that. Yes. Uh, all right, Nerd Nugget Redemption. Thank you. Going to take advantage of the second chance. The Cardinals have not beaten the Rams at home since November 9th, 2014. Part of my take was still more than a year away from existing at that point. Wow. That's crazy. That's, That's a good Nerd Nugget. Long ass time. Thank you. It's also, long remind Big time. Cotton PFT to bet Rams Cardinals tie. That's our preseason oh, chat. Okay. Cardinals yeah. tie. All right, thank you. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Very cool, Jake. Rams Cardinals tie. Got to do it. Uh, all right, Chiefs Raiders. <sighs> could the Raiders stay in this game? I think they could. I don't know. I feel like this is this is if the Chiefs had won against the Eagles, I would say bet the Raiders. I think it's maybe you, you but think the, it maybe it's a get right game. It's a get. It's a get right game. Like it's a. It's a score points in the second half game for the Chiefs. The must score points in the second half. Yeah, 100%. Similar to a must compete. Yep. Must score points. So if the Chiefs lose this game but they score 20 points in the second half. That's good. That's good. That means the progress. I'm going to count that as a win for the Chiefs. Yes. Uh, I don't know. I think the Raiders can stick in this game. I, I don't know why. I, See, it's stupid. Tom Coughlin is advising Antonio Pierce on how to coach a team. Oh, no. I love that. you got to be careful, Antonio Pierce. Tom Coughlin will just find one of his buddies to be hired instead yeah probably yeah uh all right nerd nugget for this game last week raiders running back josh jacobs surpassed marcus allen for the most rushing yards by a raider raiders running back in their first five seasons josh 5, jacobs 401 he's really good very good they just need to give him the ball all the time all the time and also maybe pay him a little bit of money yeah that would be that would be nice as well mm -hmm. we're going to get back to the weekend preview in a second it's brought to you by pepperoni I love pepperoni. Blake loves pepperoni. It's his favorite treat in the entire world. He knows all his tricks, the sit, the stay, the wave. He knows it all. He does it all for the pepperoni. I love Thanksgiving. Blake's going to be having some delicious Thanksgiving pepperoni treats. We got the food, the football, seeing family, getting to spend time with your dog. This Thanksgiving pepperoni original beef flavor will be what Blake will be eating. Give your pup a treat that has a taste and smell as irresistible as what's on the table. Your pup is your BFF, so give them a treat that they'll savor all Thanksgiving long. Go to pupperoni.com. Find a bag near you that your BFF will be grateful for this Thanksgiving. That's P-U-P-P-E-R-O-N-I.com. Find a bag near you. Uh, okay. Bill's Eagles. Max. Gauntlet. Game three. Yep. Love it. I, I, uh... I am. I'm gonna be flying during this game. I, oh, I just. I looked that up. Oh, that's bad yesterday planning. Yesterday, bad planning. Max, and I'm if already they panicking lose, about it. That's if bad they lose, planning. You're gonna. You're gonna get a lot of shit, Max. What I airline? Know, I know. What airline? Uh, United. They like don't. I'm. Oh, I've already no. talked. You could have said any airline, and Jake would have been like, ah. Oh, well, JetBlue right. and Delta yeah, usually have TVs these days. Um, I've already talked to my brother. My brother is going to be giving me text updates. During the, during the game, I'm I'm nervous about not being able to watch. I feel like that that just puts me at a disadvantage. Yeah, big you, time disadvantage. You're not there for your team. You called this a must win game earlier. It's not even a must watch game. For oh me. wow, 
No, it is a must-watch game. No, it's, just, it's not. It, well, you're zero and one on must-watch games. Bad That's not planning. true. Flying on a Sunday, you got to well, get that first flight out of town. I know, I know. I fucked up. You can change it. it uh, Probably uh, not. Cron, what, what, what? Cron Butler. I took uh, a Cron Butler and yeah. Reco before. They're uh, not bad. Ryan the, Gones is 265 yeah. <laughs> pounds coming out of high school. Can't take everyone. Yeah, fucked up. I fucked up. Max, that's it's not good. It's not. Yeah, good no, for no, you. no, no. I'm it's me. I'm nervous. Do you even like the Eagles? Nope. I have a hot take for this game. I think the Bills are going to win. Well, that's a, another must win for the Bills. I think the Bills are going to win two out of their next three, which are at Chiefs, at Eagles, at Chiefs versus Cowboys. I think the Bills are going to make the playoffs. Everything that could have gone wrong to start their season went wrong. Back against the wall. I think the Bills are going to get back in the conversation. Where this could all sound so fucking stupid come Monday morning. Where does Stefan Diggs land in this? Is he is he happy to be on the Bills, or is he trying to get out? Diva watch big time. Uh-huh. The Huge. biggest Diva watch. Yeah, I don't know. I, I just – there's no real reason for me to think this because the Eagles are the better team. Uh, but maybe it's, maybe it's as simple as Josh Allen having his guy, Ken Dorsey, fired – He's got to be like, all right, this is on me. Kind of like we were talking about with Kenny Pickett. This is on me. I have to perform. I have to take care of the football. I like Joe Brady, though. I do. Yeah. I just I got a nagging feeling. And, and the Eagles coming off a big emotional win on Monday Night Football. Weird week with Thanksgiving. But every game is an emo- Like, this, this is the gauntlet. Like, this, uh, this isn't – there's was- no, like, look ahead or – well, no, you're off a bye against the Chiefs. Yeah, and Sirianni said, like, I'm, I'm not going to do the thing where I just say it's another game. Like, th- he acknowledged that this Monday night game yeah, Super in Bowl, Kansas City was huge. Super Bowl rematch. Yeah, but... It, but it, That was your Super Bowl. I think, like, a letdown game is when you're playing, like... Uh, I understand. I'm like, just saying that's a, it's an emotional... It's an emotional... And it's like, in Philly. Win. Okay. So hey, there's going to be a lot. You're not even going to watch the game. So what do you care? I'm going to be locked in through my brother. You know what, Max? If you if if Max's brother's listening to this right now, I would actually like you to not text him updates, and we'll take care of it. I that's that, <laughs> that's not going to happen. PFT and I got you, Max. We will take care of the updates. That's we got not this. Happen. You know, we're going to watch every game. We got this. You will, I won't trust a single thing that comes Max's out. Max's brother, please. Twitter? Max's brother, please Twitter do not text really... him updates. Actually, no, yeah. You can if get you're live. texting. Yeah. Well, well, no no matter what, te- you can always text. I just want the AWS to know that no matter what, um, don't be tweeting fake updates about the game to Max during the game. Don't do that. We can't have that. He don't needs to be locked in. Yeah. Don't tweet him don't fake don't updates. Do don't be don't tell him things that are no not do right. It. Don't do that. Thank you. Thank you, listeners. No one be mean. Thank you, listeners. Uh, okay. I got some breaking moves. Oh, breaking moves. <laughs> Wisconsin will open the 2027 season against Pittsburgh in Ireland. Oh, let's go. Let's go. That's, 2027. That's oh, my. They are going to. Should we go? Yeah. They're going to drink let's Ireland go. dry. Jake, put it on the on the list. We're going to go. <laughs> Future year. Yeah, like, no, we're, we're going. We're going. We're going. <laughs> Ireland does not have enough beer. For the good people of Wisconsin. If I know that sounds zero, crazy to say. If it's week zero, 2027. How old will it be? Uh, I'm, 42. I'm thinking about my kids. I think my kids will be of age to like actually be able to waste money on them going to another country. Yeah. Because like there's, you don't want to do it when they're really young. We should probably yeah, get there. my kids will be like eight, six, and four. We should probably get there a couple weeks early to golf, Hank. Yep. Yeah. Maybe okay. Grit Week Ireland. Yeah, we're going. We're going. We're going. That's huge. All right. Huge. Hank's uh, buying flights right now. He's looking at courses. We will be there. God damn it. That's going to happen so fast. Yeah. It's going to be it's going to be summer 2027 and he's like, "Wait, we said we were going to go to this game." Fuck. I, I when lo- did we say we we're going to go to this game? I love it when they schedule the home and homes. Now they're in like 2042. It's the best. It's the best. Um all right, Nerd Nugget. The Bills defense did not allow a third down conversion against the Jets last week, forcing New York to go 0-11. It's their first time since 1987 preventing an opponent from converting a first down on a third down. Wow. Yep. Okay. Last game, Ravens Chargers. Night game, Sunday night. Uh, we do get the, the, the flex season is upon us. I hope they start flexing out uh, Monday night as well because I think I saw. Most of the Monday nights are actually good. Yeah, the, the Chiefs are playing the Patriots, which will suck. They'll yeah. probably won't flex out Patrick Mahomes. I think there was a Titans in there, Titans Dolphins maybe. Yeah, yeah, that's tough. 
But then again, it's the Dolphins, which is fun to watch. Either way, Ravens, Chargers, uh, Brandon Staley, his seat could not be hotter. I just think the Ravens, uh, this spot says Chargers, but everything that's going to happen on the field says Ravens because the Chargers now don't have Bosa. Their defense already sucked. Uh, Chargers linebackers are atrocious. Middle of their defense is really bad. Feels like the Ravens will be able to run. They'll be able to run crossers with Zay Flowers and Odell Beckham all day. I think the Ravens are going to kill them. Mark Andrews might come back by the end of the season. That's so he, huge. he might not be out uh, for the rest of the entire year, which would be great for the playoffs. For you just need him for the playoffs. Need him for the playoffs. Um, but without him, I actually like the Chargers. Ooh. I, I think Mark – like, obviously, we talked about it on, on Monday's show. He's not as good as Travis Kelsey. That's obvious. But I think he means as much to this offense as Travis Kelsey does. Uh, this Mark Andrews might be as good as this Travis Kelsey. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah. Like right now. Right now. This Mark Andrews with the devastating foot injury is yeah. as good as this. Travis Kelsey with his tired tongue and fingers. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Got it. Agreed. But uh, no, I, I actually, I know I've sworn off the C words for a very long time. I think I'm back on the C words this weekend. Okay. Four and a half point dogs at home. Staley back against the wall. No Mark Andrews. I don't know. I'm an idiot. I'm, I should not be doing I'm. I can feel myself being a moron right now. A lot of football and is going to happen between then and now. So I'm just going to go with it. I'm yeah. going to go with it because maybe I'm being contrarian, but I just, I don't know. Maybe it's just the logos. Maybe I still expect too much. You know what it is? It's time for the universe to write itself. They need to score. They need to win this game by three points. And that way. Uh, the Chargers under Justin Herbert and as a franchise in total will be back to 500. Yeah. And with a three point win, they'll have the exact zero points point differential. Perfect. That's what happens. Perfect. Three point win for the Chargers. Book it. Um. All right. Nerd Nugget. The Chargers have lost five games this season by three or fewer points. No other team has lost more than two such games. Yes. We did. We talked about that on Sunday. But that's a crazy stat. Five versus two. Yep. Yeah. Crazy. Wild. Crazy. Five of their six losses. Uh, okay, picks. Picks. We don't know what the standings are because we had Thursday football. We all did a pick for Thursday football earlier in the show, but let's get into the picks. So because memes went first, Hank will go first now? Uh, I don't know what to do with memes as picks here. We don't have them. Can you text them? You want to call them, Max? I mean, this or, is bad. Yeah, this is bad. I have them. I have them. Oh, you have them. Oh, yeah. Okay, all right. All right, great. All right, Hank, give us a pick. Hank needs to win. Find a win, Hank. Bills plus three and a half. Uh -huh. Fuck, I wanted you against to take, the Eagles. I wanted you to take an opposite out. Why did you take the Eagles out? Bills right in your face. Uh, I'll take the Colts. Colts minus two and a half at home against the Bucks. PFT. I'm going to go Atlanta Falcons minus one mm. at home against the Saints. Mm, spicy. Uh. I'm going to go with Steelers minus one at Bengals. New okay, offense. New offense. Kenny Pickett's back. Unlocked. He unlocked. Yes. I am going to go Texans. Texans. Plus one and a half. Love it. And then Memes has Memes two. Is going to go with the Titans. Okay. Against the Panthers. Minus we had a half. great preview of that game. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and. He's also going to go Bucks Colts over. Ah, I 43 and a half. I was going to go with that. I like that one. Okay. Colts are always over. Okay. I am going to go with the Chargers Ravens over. Ooh, I like it. I like it a lot. We have 46 and a half. I like it a lot, Max. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go with Giants Patriots under. 33 and a half. Ooh. Mm, yeah, that's going to be a gross one. Ooh. I'm going to do it. Bears Vikings over 43 and a half. Oh, I like it. I was actually looking at that one yep. as well. Monday night. All right, I'll go Rams Cardinals over 44 and a half. Hank, finish us off. I will go with Steelers Bengals under 34 and a half. Mm, nice. Okay, those are our picks. Uh, good show, boys. Hope everyone has a happy and healthy Thanksgiving. Uh, now, would we like to talk about the lottery ball machine, Max? Ballgate. Ballgate. For those not on Twitter, what happened? 
Go ahead, Max. You were the one who was collecting the data. You weren't saying it, but other people were saying yeah, it. Yeah, there were other people saying I, it. I want it very clear. Max never said it. I didn't say any of this. But there Although were... he did slip up because he's so dumb when we were arguing in the studio. He was like, I think you did. And I was like, what? Why'd you say I? No, that that may or may not be no, true. No, that definitely happened. That may you, or may you, not be you true. Can't, you can't. You were trying to do my bit back to me, which I respect, but you can't even... Hold well, it. yeah, you, come on. It was get, it gets heated in the moment. And you, you get heated in every moment. Yeah, <laughs> you're just a heated guy. You run hot. Guy you run hot. Yeah, she's a guy. boy ass play. <laughs> so, Max, yeah, you, you want to explain to the people what happened? Um, yeah, we basically established this lottery ball is different than the last lottery ball mm -hmm. because the last lottery ball you would click a button and then you would just let it go. It would play. It would go around for a couple seconds and then right. automatically it would take a ball. This one, you physically the person. Pressing the button physically has to pick a moment of when the ball comes up. Mm -hmm. Every other time this year, Big Cat has turned his head. Not when true. He, no. Not true. Those screenshots, I, I, I don't care. Max, I don't Max care. Didn't Other people care. Let him finish, let him finish. Max didn't care. He's just collecting all data, but he also went back and watched every episode. So you would. Well, it sounds like a good investigation. So yeah, but he's not the one investigating because he's talking about other people. At the start, when we got the lottery ball machine, I think we did specify yes. when we did the first rep. That you are to look away when you press Correct. It because you have a button that presses Correct. to select. Okay. Correct. So in all of the other ones, you you click the button that, that gets the machine going. You turn your head. You turn back to make sure that your finger is on the right button. And then you turn your head again. And then you click the 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 picking button that like sucks it up. Okay. Use your words. So picking the one that... <laughs> Don't listen to him, Max. Just... The, the one that you won, you looked the entire time, and and there was no looking away. It was the first time that you had looked the entire yep. time. Late Sunday night, forgot that I was supposed to look away. That's my bad. Yeah. Uh, so other people on Twitter brought to my this to my attention. Not you. Not you. And it has nothing I to do with me and Hank's alliance that has you just. I was just shaking sharing. in your boots. I was sharing I'm the findings of, the alliance. of other like, I people. Need, I need to get in this alliance. Well, I, now, I, I will admit it. Now, I, I mean, now it's not even a real alliance. What are you it's talking like about? There's an there's an asterisk. Hey, there. do you think I did it? I saw you do it. Yeah, I, wait, I got the button. Wait. I got the number. You saw him do what? He saw me get the number. Hey, can you put your headphones on? Okay, I can. Max, you can hear too. Max. Max talks okay. too loud. So here here's the thing. Uh, we tried to recreate it. Because it's not easy to do. The to numbers, it. the balls they move, move very fast. so fast. Like you and can't I tried see to what number it is. And I try. I said I'm going to try to pick 64. And uh, Max, you witnessed me do this. I selected the button and I got 63. Okay. Which is I don't know if that's an interesting data point or not. No, it's because it's you saw a number inside the circle that looked like 64. 63 okay. is close to 64. Now I don't believe that Big Cat was able to select the number. Like that's it's Correct. very very hard to do. Correct. But I also know that if anyone else had done what Big Cat that's did, fair. Big Cat would be the yeah. one leading the charge. Being well, like no, I, I wouldn't. Leader. I would be listening to other people say it, like Max did. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So can I speak? Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, I'm being 100% honest when I say I did not see the number and then hit select. I was it was a late Sunday night. I was dazed and I'm just like blankly staring at the lottery ball machine. But I love Jim Harbaugh. Jim Harbaugh showed this this uh Max and PFT much like Cry and Ryan day. Uh excusism is rampant in our world where if you don't win, it's not like hey, we lost it's we got to find a way to claim someone else did it wrong and cheated, and we have to make excuses for our own failures. It's a sad state of where America is as a country. I wish I could stop it. I'm only one man. I wish I could stop the type of behavior that Max and PFT are, are, are projecting right now. I, I just had your lose, back, and I said that I don't think that I think it's possible to Okay, all right. It. So just Max. I'll take you out of it, PFT. Whoa, whoa, just whoa. Just Max. Whoa, whoa. I, I have a Max? All right. Uh, you're right. No. You're right, PFT. Well, PFT's right. I, I'm, I just I, heard I, Max I, say it. All right, now Max. I'm, I'm telling you what I heard other people say. Uh, the, uh, what camera am I looking at? I want to look at the camera to the people. That, that one. That okay. What Max is displaying right now is everything that's wrong with this country. This country is probably going to falter in the next decade or so because of people like Max. Max is an excuse guy. Max is a loser. If he loses a game, instead of saying, I lost the game, he says, oh, well, they cheated. They did something wrong. I have to find a way out of this. There's no way I could lose. It's pathetic. It's cowardly. And it's disgusting. 
It is exactly how this country has completely gone to waste. If I could run for president right now, I wouldn't. I'd say, I'd just hold a poster of Max and be like, don't be like Max. Make America not Max again. That's what we need to do. Make America men again. Make America men again. So here's what I'm going to do. Because Max has muddied the waters and be such a crybaby loser coward, I will say right now, I'm fine with not taking the win because that's what you want, Max. You want to make no. excuses. No, oh, no let me finish. I want, I, want let a, me finish. I want an asterisk. Let me finish. Max wants excuses when he doesn't win something. So guess what? Much like Jim Harbaugh, I'll say, go ahead. That's fine. I don't win. Hank, I'm out of the club. They want They want to drag me down. They want to make a mockery of this whole thing and cry, be like crybabies. I thought we stood for something on this podcast. I thought we were men. Unfortunately, we're boys. And I'll play your little boy ass game right now. So I will take away the 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 winning seventy one. And guess what? Because I'm such a man and because I believe in this great country, I will win it without looking at it before Max does. Okay, so here's that was a great speech, Big Thank Cat. You, thank you. Thank, um, thank you. I, I do love run through a brick wall. I, I love you're gonna make yourself run through a brick wall. Yeah, I mean, well the brick wall is just Max and his fat fuck. All right, so as as an impartial observer <laughs> to this entire situation, I was behind the times when I found out about it. I came in here. Max gave me the entire rundown, which, again, he didn't say, but other people were saying. Um, I don't believe that Big Cat actually was able to select the ball. The balls move very so quickly. Fast. But on this podcast, we do have precedent yeah. for button-pressing scenarios. Yeah. Wait, I what's think, that? What what happened with that? I think, Max forgot to press the button for this podcast for the first time in yeah, seven years. Yeah, so, A loser coward. So given his, the loser coward punishment, yeah. I think we should enact a similar punishment in case Big Cat happens to press the button while looking at the lottery ball machine again, Okay, which would be two years in a soul patch for Big Cat. That's fine. Okay. That's fine. Well, I have to look at it no, I'm while saying, pressing it and then also get it. No, I'm saying you cannot press the button and look at the balls. But it would have to be time. me getting it as well. That would be an automatic two year soul patch. Because, like, again, it was Sunday night. I'm fucking dazed. I'm. Uh, people can believe. I think the. I think people who understand what it means to be a man to stand on something, what America used to be, will understand that when I say I am not able to select when the number is coming, know that I was not cheating. I was literally just dazing. And looking at this thing at, at midnight on a Sunday after a long weekend. But I think what you're saying is fair, but it has to be if I look and I get the number, then it's automatic. If you look at our and anyone gets the number, that's fine. I would say I'll, because I'll, there, I'm might fine be, with that. there might be cahoots. I'm fine with that. No, no. I'll never look again. And again, when I did look, I, I offered Max to sit down in my chair and try to try to get the number exactly. Again, coward, loser. Mm Everything communism, my counsel all these told me things, that, that was not that communism, was not the smart move. like all the bad things that you know in this world. Max was like, no, pedophilia, all these things. Max stands for, and Incorrect. he wouldn't not sit true. in the, ta the chair. I, I and saw your it. tweet last night, Max. Yeah, that, that was a, it. Was a little boy ass play. Yeah, you love pizza. Interesting. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I think it's innocent until proven guilty. That, thank you, Jake. But that's fine. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take. I'm going to take all because I love the lottery ball machine. I love this thing. I think it's a very fun wrinkle that our show has. I'm surprised Bustin hasn't stolen it yet. <laughs> I I love this lottery ball machine. I don't want it to be corrupted by losers, cowards, babies like Max Delente. And cheaters. And, and, Agreed. And, and Max ma making a mockery of this whole thing. He you were sullied it. <laughs> One he per sullied it. You were making a mockery of no, this No, 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 no. Just I was uh, not. Just, okay, so Big Cat's giving some great speeches here. For the record. I'm, I'll keep going with speeches. He would be, he would be on the complete yeah, opposite of course. side of this. I agree. If I Max agree. Had pressed the <laughs> I agree. He would be I a agree. loser. You would be, Max, Max would turn you into a loser I so agree. fast. That's why Max I'm, won I'll tell you what wouldn't happen, though. If Max was on the other side, he wouldn't take strip his own title away no i'm sh i'm showing i'm leading from the front no no because it's showing I, that excuses and will not stand in this country no you and just, i will start from scratch and start with zero wins Max, you can't, and i will win it without you you can't let him take a win by taking a loss. i did you know I that did. right no. the 71 no, does not count I, i'm at zero I jake update the log no, i'm at jake, zero jake well, let's take a vote no, I I'm no, yeah, vote, I, vote, I, vote, I think vote, vote. No, let's I take a vote. my own title. Vote. I think that was a great, great speech, and I know that you believed every word of it. I stripped and my I own title. I think that we should vote on it. And no, I think this the, is the what Max wanted. The punishment and he's getting be it. that if if you pick the machine and it gets on anybody. Yeah, here, no, we already established that. Then you get yeah, that. We already established. Also, that. interesting data point. Uh, we we filmed a little uh, interview for the PMT documentary afterwards, 
And uh, the guy that's putting it all together, he was like, I'm going to try to do it. And he tried to get 50 and he got 49. Okay. He got one off. And I was like, that is really interesting, well, that, but, but that, that actually has nothing that to do with no it sense. because it doesn't look like Memes 50. tried to yeah. get three and he got like 58. So I, 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 I am, no, I'm, it's I'm not zero. That you I'm at zero. Get it. No, it's, I'm at zero. It, all it says is that you would increase your chances of getting it. Okay. And I'm telling you, I was not looking at the balls being like, I got to press the button at this exact time. Okay. You, all you those were. in favor. I was, I was not staring at the balls, trying to press the button at the exact time. I'm telling you the honest truth. And again, I'm at zero. And Max, no. this is a this is a bad again. I, uh, vote. You, hold on, let me speak for we a second. We got to vote. This is a bad lesson to the people. I feel bad for the AWLs because this is proving that the cowards and the babies and the losers like Max excusism does win. I think we got to vote. That's how bad it is. I think we got to vote on this. I think it's that's the zero. Only way that's to do my it. wish. Hank, please vote for me for zero. Jake, please vote for me for zero. Don't you, no campaigning allowed. Agreed. I've already given. All right. Seats. Does. Big Cat's lotto machine count in the final standings. All in favor. Wait, it's either count or doesn't count. No asterisks. That's the vote. <laughs> I, my, no, vote you can't, my vote is asterisks. You can't vote asterisks. It's either counts or doesn't count. You can, write, no in. You can write in, right? Yeah, all right, fine. I'll, I'll Go ahead. It, I'll write in asterisks. So you vote asterisks counts. PFT, you vote counts? I vote that it counts because I, I tried to simulate it. It's way harder than you think. It's, it's impossible. basically impossible to do. It was interesting, though. I just want to say I'm, I'm going to vote that it counts. But it's interesting. It, it would be hard. For, if I was able to do it, I would have done it already, and I would have made sure Hank never got it. That would have been a fact. Uh, who votes that it does not count? Strip it from the record. Jake, what's your vote? I think it counts. All right. I, I know what you're feeling. As, your as someone who's done Please something on camera I that's really it, hard to do, and off. people want to say it's fake, Jake, I'm it's asking really you, frustrating. Vote I'm your asking conscience. You the time, vote's in. The so vote's in. You can't change the vote. It's a tie. So, the, like, so it sounds like asterisk. No, it is. That's you voted fine. asterisk. Jake, please change your vote. I'm asking you nicely. I would like to start at zero. I don't want to have any clouded. You don't you know, hard for I don't, don't deserve it because you. stand up for yourself. He's Jake. muddied the water. <sighs> I don't want I don't want there to be any controversy with the lottery ball machine. I love this lottery ball machine. I don't see any controversy. You won. I understand. But Max has muddied the water I, with what all is the Meme's people thing? that he's thrown in there. I'm what asking you nicely, oh, Jake. Please vote for me. I want to get it. I want to get it again before Max does, and then be like, "Fuck you, Max." I will literally face fucking memes. That memes gets to the think of the moment, here. Jake. Memes think of the memes. moment. I'm gonna text memes, Jake. Think of the moment. I, Please, you, you I'm asking for win. your vote. No, I don't deserve it. I don't want it because Max has made has ruined it for me. I don't. So want you, it. then you should do a self imposed ban. No, I don't. All right, want fine. It. I'll get on your side. No win. All right, great. All right. All right. Hey, hey Big Cat, you ever got this? No, I haven't, Max. Hey, Max, are you a, li a loser baby coward nope. cry baby? Yes, you nope. are. That's fine. Everyone everyone who's listening right now, I just want to say again, stand on the right side of America. Don't let the Maxes win because this is happening. Every small town in America is having Maxes pop up and make cry baby excuses for every little thing, every little hardship, and that's how we lose. You want China? China's coming. For the record, it China was, doesn't make excuses. It was other people that – it was some people. It wasn't me. China doesn't make excuses. All right, numbers. 18. Eight, 20. 71. Off oh, 20. 17. Bangs this. Evan has 56, 56. Shane 10. Does Memes have? Memes usually goes memes, three, right? Yeah. No, but he didn't say three. Yeah, he did. He's not here. Memes gets it. Memes. 74. Oh, I must have looked. I must have looked. I can't wait to get it before. I'm, I, I feel like Dan. I, yeah, I might. I might release a, a Dan Gilbert comic sans. Remember when you said uh, that? report <laughs> being like they, they they will never win a title. Well, without. He, was, he was wrong. Yeah, I know he was wrong, <laughs> but but you get the point. Remember when you said that the Eagles were going to lose because I brought together justice? No, I said there was bad vibes. Yeah, it was bad vibes. Karma. Look, you Ball don't lie. You, everyone should. Again, I I was awoken last night to realizing the AWLs who think Max is disgusting and annoying and talks too much. And I saw it for a moment. I do love him. I don't think that's true, but I at least hear you now. You're 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 a herd minority. This is a, a classic case of Max being a crybaby loser. Well did it with the turf in the Super Bowl. You're gonna do it again now. Much like the Michigan Ohio State thing, we need to find out who discovered this. Was this what it's Twitter so, account someone on YouTube. Was it was it Max's brother? I can give I can give credit. To the first person who brought this to my attention. Also, John Rich was really he had a he had a great uh, tweet about it. What did he say? He I can pull that up. He said, 
Not a con- this was after the memes test because Big Cat was like, this proves that I didn't do it. Not a conclusive test. Would have to run thousands of tests to know if a competitive advantage is gained from choosing a ball at the top of the pile. Could Barstool Big Cat pick correctly every time? No. Could he improve his odds from 1 to 100 to 1 to 50? Maybe. Great point. Okay, so um, I would love to do a test. I will do a test. Th- he said thousands. Thousands. I'll do thousands. What do I got to do? Oh, yeah, this guy. Actually, we, Sean, should, we should have Hank Sean do that Spelberg. while in the box. Yeah. Hanks and Max, should, you guys should do that in the box. That's one of your things. Sh- Sean what? Sean Spellbrink. So he is the he king is, of losers the, and cowards no, and crybabies who make excuses in this world. He is the king of world. justice. He is the king of I justice. I think there will be a lot of people who realize that I've been nothing but forthright in this, in this investigation and in this entire thing, and they'll be like, I want to stand with a guy like Big Cat who wants to make America great again. It's just a coincidence. It was a, it was a hell of a coincidence and very mm-hmm. interesting mm-hmm. that you. Have I do done agree. It. it was interesting. Like that's all I'm saying. No, you were saying more than that. That's all that was. You 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 yeah, you, you take were things the way more that you than that. want. You were saying more than that. It's, when, uh, you were saying more. When than I saw that. Max yesterday when he brought this to to my attention, he had the biggest smile on his face. Yeah, and he you know when Max gets excited, excited he starts to like itch his balls. Yeah, he was doing that. <laughs> yeah, he was like, oh, you got to see what's going I got on the with same this smirk. Because he yeah, because yeah. he fu- he found an excuse for being a loser. It wasn't. A, it was just an interesting observation yeah. interesting. that Sean Spellbrink brought to the table. Okay, and then everyone else who also saw all of the data was a lot of people also were on my it. side. A uh, lot of people were. Let's on get my a poll. Side. Okay, a lot of people were on my side. No. There, Yes, you were, Max. Most people are on my cor- side. You, you, Max is doing the thing like when Clay Travis does like a who's everyone going to vote for in 2024, and it's his Twitter audience. Mm-hmm. Max, of course, my Twitter audience lo- is your tr- your loser. Your loser Twitter audience is going to be is going to be like, yeah, Max, we didn't lose. Let's make excuses. I think what we the have turf to do, in the Super Bowl. This is, a, this is actually what we should do. We should have Max during the the live stream where he's locked in a box with Hank. They should have to do the lottery machine. And if Max gets it and tries to get it within the first 50 choices, then Max, it's wiped off the board and we never talk about it again. Well, it's already wiped off the board. It's already wiped off the board. I'm at zero. If, you can't, if you can't get it, then, I'm it, wiped then off it the pops board. back up. I'm at zero. I'm what going you, to get... What do, you, what do you think, Max? I feel like that would be good for the, for the live stream. I'm going to get this number before Max, and it's going to be the best day of my life. It'll be no. better than all three of my children being born. That's a fact. But then what, what, what about when I get it before you? I will smash this lottery ball machine <laughs> over your head. And I'll try to find some excuse like you and be a crybaby. All right. That's the show. Thank you, everyone, for listening to my presidential speech. I will be running soon. Love you guys.